let's get this party started, guys. Uh, so somebody had sent me uh, a while, a little while ago, this like boogie documentary, whatever, from Turkey Tom. I was like, okay, whatever. I put it in the back burner. But then apparently, uh, Boogie and um, Anthony Jessel, like, Tom, Turkey Tom. I don't know why Anthony Jessel that came to my head. Wow, he's a young Anthony Jessel. Anyway, Turkey Tom and, and Boogie had a conversation about it. So I figured, let's watch this video, and then we'll make another video watching this conversation video. I mean, what a beautiful day. Let's get it started. Many YouTube icons come with an expiration date. While some walk away from a fan base perpetually starving for a comeback upload, others leave no legacy behind at all besides their language. Who's that guy? Wishing fame, being looked upon as little more than a relic of the past. For many people, that's what Boogie2988 is. An old Whoa. fad, like Chocolate Rain, that simply doesn't belong in this day and age. Come on, bro. However, those who are song. unfortunate enough to know that he never left tend to know him as a pathological liar, manipulator, and overall someone deserving of criticism and mockery. From Damn. pointing a gun at Frank Hassel's face to losing hundreds of thousands- Well, listen, to the gun thing, I, I don't blame him for that. To be honest. He can't, the dude showed up to his house, like, trying to troll him, so I don't really care about that. Um, as far as this though is crazy, he invested all of his money into into Bungus coin or whatever, and then he lost it all, and then he like begged people for money. So that was pretty that was pretty wild. Business on cryptocurrency, <clears throat> Boogie's glory days are long gone, after and his he, attempts to return yeah, after he used to brag about how how amazing of a decision that it was. He started he was bragging, and then all of a sudden we lost it. All. He's like, guys, please, I'm only making like eighty thousand dollars a year. That's what I think. He, that's what he said. He's like, I'm only making like eighty thousand dollars a year. That's what he like showed us. <laughs> It's like that's a that's a good amount of money, man. Like most people can live on that, but not not Boogie, not Boogie. Incredible stuff. Aren't working. He's now been reduced to a lol cow and one that is slowly losing interest even amongst his haters. This is the full oh, war of Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. That's kind of true, man. Once your haters, well, for some people, if, if you lose the hater interest, man, for Boogie, he's one of those guys where it's like, that's pretty much it, my brother. You know, he's got sad stuff. Boogie, real name Stephen Jason Williams, oh, was born name. in 1974 in St. Paul, Virginia, to that's a coal miner father and a school teacher mother, as well as oh. two siblings. As he's often described, his childhood wasn't easy. Because of the stress that comes from being a coal miner, his father was an alcoholic, which Damn. negatively affected the rest of the family in a myriad of ways. That's At the peak of his drinking problems, he was downing up to 30 beers in one single day, Jesus. an extreme that scarred Boogie to the point that he would never drink alcohol even as an adult. To oh. top it all off, Boogie also claims his mother and sister were very mentally ill, making for an intensely toxic home environment involving lots of arguing and constant screaming, which he remembers as devolving into outright abuse abuse coming from his mother. To make hmm. matters worse, Steven tended to have a lot of health problems, though initially not serious Damn. and the <laughs> kind of thing people usually shrug off or take over the counter pills for, like the flu or allergies. However, these illnesses were chronic for him. Oh, was he ha like he was having like a lot of like basic illnesses problems? I mean, that just that to me points to like a dirty household or something. Or unless he has some kind of an autoimmune disease. Causing him to stay home from school a lot. As you might expect, being inside all the time led to a habit that would haunt him for the rest of his life. World of Warcraft. Eating. Before oh. he was even in high school, he Listen. already dealt <laughs> Listen, it's just as valid. All right, World of Warcraft is a plague, guys. Video games terrible for you. Get go, get outside, escape the Matrix. Okay. With a serious weight problem due to stress eating, it was also during this time he developed an interest in things like comic books, video games, and Dungeons and Dragons, right, which, point. though harmless on their own, certainly didn't help him to go outside more often. Meanwhile, his father's constant smoking and drinking, when paired with their increasingly stressful domestic situation and his exhausting job, was taking its toll on his health. Eventually, he suffered from a major stroke, one that left Damn. him basically immobile and unable to function. He was no Jesus. longer able to hear and struggled a lot with communicating after he developed a stutter as a consequence of the stroke. Now, with just one parent to take care of him and his siblings, Boogie's Damn. support system was even smaller, and his binge eating severely Jesus. worsened. It's tough enough to be raised by a single parent, but as his dad moved out of the picture, his mom's abusive behavior took center stage. Usually, in the absence of a healthy and nurturing home life, people seek refuge in their peers and community. But this wasn't an option for Boogie either, since his classmates did little. I, I know this is so weird. How much of that do we feel is true? I mean, I, I that maybe that's just too negative on Boogie. I just he just lies a lot, so it's like hard to take everything he says seriously sometimes. Um, but you know, I think that maybe that maybe I'm just being a little too cynical. So, I don't know. Besides mock him for his late what appearance. Up? Things were dire, and Boogie's future prospects looked very dark at this point in his life. But thankfully, during high school, he was given an opportunity that would turn things around. Upward Bound is a federally funded pre-college program designed to give high school students a better opportunity at attending a university, targeted specifically at those in low-income or rural areas who may be less likely to seriously consider higher education. While okay. participating in this program, he met others in similar situations to him who shared his interest in nerd culture. He bonded with a girl on the program over playing video games. A which girl? Over lining on the dark... Ew, a girl playing video games, bro? That's that's wild. That's unnatural, guys. God told me. Okay. Cloud that had been his childhood up until this point. By the end of high school, he had friends and even a girlfriend. And upon cool. graduating, he enrolled in the same college as her, the University of Virginia. But shortly thereafter, they would break up. And since this Damn. was his first serious relationship. How come they broke up? What happened? 
Do you think it was because he showed her like his Pokemon collection, or was it because his Pokemon collection wasn't good enough? It's one of those two. You never know what a gamer girlfriend. Yep, and one of his few sources of happiness, it hit him hard, sending him deep into a depression which affected his academic performance. His grades were so bad that he had to drop out, and once again, he was directionless. But thankfully, his brother yeah. took pity on him after he noticed how much he was struggling and decided to offer him an opportunity to move away and start from scratch. Bogey took him up on that offer, not that he had many alternatives to pick from. While in Arkansas with his brother... I like that he's got some uh, Cool Whip or whatever it's called right there. He's probably doing Whippets. Wait, is that actually World of Warcraft in the background? As a desktop, I don't know, whatever. His life once again saw improvement. More nerds <laughs> in the area meant making friends wasn't going to be difficult. Soon, he was participating in Dungeons and & Dragons and Magic the Gathering Whoa. sessions with his new social circle. That's On top great. of that, he learned how to code in HTML, <laughs> which led to him working as a freelance web designer. <clears throat> One of the downsides of this was that he'd have to take clients he wasn't particularly excited about, such as CD Not Safe for Work websites, but then again, it was still better than unemployment. So I started- hey, you gotta make that money. Get paper, get paid, get laid, baby. You know what I'm saying? Using what I learned to start coding for get the web. Get paid, get and laid, I started baby. Doing web design which was really fun, even though sometimes I ended up with clients that I didn't like working for who did yeah. kind of dirty stuff. He was now a young man with a stable income and a healthy like, Were they doing like weird stuff? Like, what was it that they were doing? What does he mean? Did they, were they making inappropriate websites or something? Or <clears throat> did he just not want to work? Or did he make did he make the first OnlyFans? Bookie, are you a pioneer? Jesus, you should have got some of that money, baby. Life. However, he was still getting sick, and he was depressed very often. He never yeah. properly dealt with his childhood trauma, and because of that, he also never stopped binge eating. And he was Yeah, I mean, it can be very difficult to deal with any trauma, really. I mean, you have to go to a therapist, and then going to a therapist unlocks a can of worms. I think this is some people things that stuff, this is something that I don't know if everybody like truly understands. I mean, it depends on the severity of what's going on, but <clears throat> going to a therapist typically means that you have to be very um very open about like your past, which is obvious, right? I'm not saying anything that's crazy, but it can kind of, in some some instances, it can make things worse before it makes things better for people, <clears throat> because you have to kind of, you have to unlock uh, some potentially very painful memories first uh, before you make any progress. So you might take like two steps back just to take three steps forward, and it, plus it's expensive as well. So another factor resulting weight gain worsened his other issues at around this time his father passed away from cancer and his mother broke her leg a combination of events that condemned steven to a period of chronic depression that lasted a total of seven years during this time he rarely left his house and was for all intents and purposes a neat not in education employment or training as his motivation to work dwindled the coding market became more and more competitive causing his source of income to dry up quickly a fate that was soon after met by his savings that's interesting i'm like a little surprised that the coding market would become more competitive because i feel like those types of fields are like pretty in demand so maybe just in his area but also due to not leaving the house his social life stopped existing after all that he'd been through he found himself back at square one with the only significant change being that he was significantly more heavy at his heaviest he was just shy of 600 pounds while his Whoa. roommate financially supported him out of pure pity youtube was debuting hey at least you can get free food at that heart attack grill you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about guys they have like this weird place in like is it new orleans where if you weigh 350 pounds plus you could eat for free that's crazy I feel like that's pretty, that's kind of a low number though for a fat person, especially in America. But what I will say is I feel like it's unfair to the women, right? Because it's harder for a woman to get that way that much than it is for a man. So I feel like it's that place is sexist if you think about it. It's very sexist. Is a video sharing platform. This early on, it was still mostly populated by home videos and vlogs, with the occasional viral video peppered throughout. While it was rudimentary, it was more than enough to pique his attention, and soon he started posting content of his own. 16 years ago, in the ancient times of ye old 2006, the first video was uploaded to the Boogie 2988 channel. It was a simple, short clip of a 31 year old Boogie playing D&D. The videos kept coming, and because he appeared in them, his appearance itself would become a topic of conversation in the comment section. Since at this point, he was used to people making. Do you mean that they're gonna <laughs> bully the shit out of him for his weight? Is that the topic of conversation that people engaged in uh okay cool stuff making fun of him for his weight he made videos playing into the joke such as That's that smart. guy eats mcdonald's french fries this is the damn food i shouldn't eat so much of it can you write that off can you write that off again shouldn't be eating at mcdonald's but i am it. Eventually, one of these videos saw a surprising amount of success, especially for early YouTube standards. The aptly incredible titled bulk. The Incredible Bulk had wow. Boogie ripping his shirt off, showcasing his M1 Abrams frame. Overall, Damn. people were very sympathetic towards him as he embraced the mockery of his weight and seemed to be a kind and down-to-earth guy. But even at this stage, Steven's intention was not just having fun. He wanted to build a following online. Since back then, the term YouTuber didn't fun exist and the thought of building a brand out of your personality was ludicrous and far-fetched, Boogie uploaded many different kinds of videos to try and get some views, such as this hip Yeah, I mean, I wonder, I wonder if this was like just the worst decision in the world to make. <laughs> For, <laughs> like Boogie did really well for a while and we're like oh man good guy but like it was so, what an unrealistic thing especially since there wasn't even a pathway to a career back then 
It sounds like he could have potentially... That was his first bad mistake, was to just... Uh, was to invest everything into YouTube coin. It just kind of worked out. I think that's how it works for a lot of people. I wonder if he had a contingency plan or if he just said fuck it and put everything into it. <clears throat> This video, which was seen over 5 million times. For the first few years of his channel's existence, he slowly built a community with series such as Rambling About Nothing, where the only purpose was to engage with the viewer. I'm um, Magic the Gathering Plane Chase. Um, the people are really excited about it. We've been watching Zendikar spoilers. In 2009, his channel hit 3,000 subscribers, which once again at the Damn. time was a respectable amount. Soon after, however, he uploaded a video explaining the absence of uploads, where he reveals his mother had died. But and unlike his previous bouts of complete inactivity said. due to some kind of tragedy in his personal life, Boogie came back with a vengeance and began playing a character. Francis, the living and breathing Thing, though struggling to do so, embodiments of the basement dwelling. Has 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 Boogie tried to make a new character? Like, has he tried to re-roll, like his um, shtick? Because like, yeah, I know he had Francis or whatever, but has he ever tried to make like a different character that might be like a little more uh, updated and like I guess relatable even? And so, like, has that been an option or a thought to him? I don't know. I don't really watch too much Boogie. Con I never really did. Um, Never the biggest boogie fan. I win the fan of dying right here, though, apparently. So. Gamer stereotypes. <laughs> Complete with Mountain Dew stains all over his shirt. <laughs> In early 2010, Francis I've took a prominent role in Boogie's channel, though. partly Jesus for Christ. comedic purposes okay. and partly because Boogie enjoyed trolling those who were unfamiliar with his content into thinking Francis was a real person. Eventually, a Francis video was real? featured on Ray William Johnson's Equals 3, which was the early 2010s equivalent of having Moist Critical react to your video. What Essentially, it meant you either Johnson? were, or soon will be, really, really popular. Is there an Internet AJ Rise and Fall compilation video <clears throat> on, on Ray William Johnson did? I think we need one of those. Where is that? The video that Ray showed was titled, Francis Gets His Warcraft Account Hacked, and honestly, it's pretty tame compared to a lot of the stuff we see nowadays. Regardless, it was entertaining enough that nowadays it stands at a whopping 5 million views. Whoa. This sets a precedent for Boogie, and in the following years, the Francis character will be the channel's bread and butter. The channel grew tremendously, to which Francis reacted. Yeah, it's been a pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting day, I guess. The channel surpassed 13,000 subscribers, and a few other classic Francis videos also went viral, such as Fat Guy Destroys Xbox. However, despite how yeah. central Francis became to the channel, he continued Xbox? to also appear as himself because he genuinely enjoyed interacting with Jesus. viewers, regardless of how out of context it seemed alongside the comedy videos. While he did try a few Xbox, other characters out, such as Redneck Stereotype Jesse, Francis oh, retained his- yeah, I guess he did try other characters. Okay, well position at the top Fuck of the hierarchy. Then, huh? By the end of 2010, <laughs> Boogie had 40,000 subscribers and had amassed 10 million views. In 2011, yeah. Boogie did a series of Let's Plays of Minecraft as Francis to capitalize on the growing gaming trend on YouTube, which at the time was at its very beginning. But along with these innovations, Boogie continued to post the tried and true format of Francis freaking out, such as, where's my Mountain Dew? You know, to the Mountain Dew story, <clears throat> I have I have a story for that. So I'm not like a huge Mountain Dew fan, more of a Surge guy. <laughs> more of a Diet Coke kind of guy. Yeah, I have Diet Coke so I can eat more food. It's just it's really just a skill issue for you if you don't if you don't play like that. Anyway, my we uh, the other a while back, my wife and I we went to get some food. We stopped by Taco Bell. Okay. I know. I'm not supposed to eat Taco Bell. Shut up. No. We got there, you know, whatever. I was busting my, my wife's chops. I like to bust my wife's chops all the time and she just wasn't having it that day. She just wasn't in the mood to have her chops busted, so to speak. But I was busting them. <clears throat> I kept busting those chops. What the fuck is this? Um, and so, you know, we get home and she puts down uh, her her drink, her Baja Bless. She got a diet Baja Bless. She was really feeling it that way. And she put it down and on our stoop. There's like handrails on it. Put it down there to open the door. And I, I gestured as if I was going to throw it and, and, break, and throw it off the thing and, and get rid of it. And she got so and she got angry at me. So she threw it instead. Um, which was annoying. So then I, uh, I think I went to the gym and then she went to get another Baja Blast. <laughs> but yeah, man, don't, uh, don't fuck with my wife on her diet Baja Blast from Taco Bell. And I don't have any Mountain Dew. Like, I, I saw some Mountain Lightning earlier. Wait. That's a Mountain Dew, right? Baja Blast? With the extreme success of his channel becoming profitable as YouTube's ad revenue mechanisms became more functional, Boogie moved out of the apartment he was living in and into a house with his girlfriend who helped him wow. record the videos and even quit her job to help him out with them. Part of the reason that it was so easy to play Francis as much as he did was because Boogie was indeed very passionate about things like gaming news and internet culture. All he had to do was play up the fits of rage while he spoke his mind, and he was consistently met with hundreds of thousands of views and decent money to go with. After successfully proposing to his girlfriend and opening a gaming channel called Boogie Plays Games, he hit the
the milestone of 100,000 subscribers. It's also around this time Google Plus integration was implemented, which forced people to use their real name to comment on videos and led to a general uproar in the platform, with Francis pitching in his two cents. This is not better, this is worse! How did they make it worse? I didn't think there was anything worse than a Google comment section! But since this was a more serious topic for him that he felt passionate about, Boogie also spoke on it out of character, and soon after, he was once again featured on Equals 3. So recently, YouTube changed their comment system where now you have to sign into your Google Plus account before you can actually comment. Now, personally, uh... I don't really care. I don't. What's wrong with that? Isn't that how it is? Is that how it works now? Kind of, well, not Google Plus account, but you have to log into an account now, right? I don't really know. I don't comment on videos, so I guess I'm just an idiot. But isn't that how it works? Read comments that often, and frankly, it's just YouTube. Who gives a shit? But I've noticed people freaking out, like, I gotta sign into Google Plus? What is this, Nazi Germany? But this guy Francis has this rant about the topic that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. By the end of 2013, he got married to his girlfriend, he had a better camera, and had grown a proper <laughs> fan base of 1 million subscribers. In Jesus. early 2014, he started appearing on TV shows and commercials, which yeah, marked the peak of Boogie's career. I had a guy tell me, you're too fat to be on the internet Keep yourself now he was now a fish damn dude that's crazy <laughs> who would say that uh that's wild though. Actually a mainstream YouTuber, not just a viral gag based on Francis. He had a genuine fan base, a real community. A lot of people watched him because they genuinely liked him and considered him a kind, level-headed person with reasonable opinions. This yeah. persisted for years with him receiving acclaim from every YouTuber under the sun and many looking to him to weigh in on some of the biggest problems <laughs> from 2014 to 2017 with his opinion. An opinion that yeah. at the time people yeah. did value. Yeah. So let's start by talking about what happened to Felix because I think everybody knows what happened to PewDiePie. What PewDiePie made some very tasteless jokes jokes that I did not personally find all that funny. Yeah, he would also yeah, talk about yeah, more serious yeah. issues, like when Matthew Santoro posted a video detailing physical abuse he suffered in a relationship. That's the fans it. put two and two so. together and figured he was talking about Nicole Arbor, who was also yeah. widely hated on the YouTube platform at the time. Boogie posted a yeah, video yeah, expressing yeah. his... Well, hey, listen, as I always say, you can never t trust a tree. That's why I don't eat broccoli. Rhymes. Huh? I say that. Maybe. But these for Matthew, and also detailed abuse he claimed to have suffered. My sister got taken out of her home because of the abuse she received she was i think 13 or 14. Damn. through the francis character boogie was funny through his more personal Darn. videos he was seen as thoughtful introspective and a voice of reason amidst all the madness of 2016 youtube drama so he handsome. was someone many looked to for a good take on unfolding situations but as time passed many began to feel as though this reasonable demeanor was a facade for someone with an extreme inability to take any criticism or stand up for any ideal thus begins the fall of boogie 2988 at huh. this point in time i wonder if he couldn't it wasn't if he couldn't take criticism or if he uh because a lot of people can't on the internet Sometimes it seems like uh, people can struggle to take criticism. You know, maybe that's maybe that's why he was so uh, he went so fucking unhinged into like this weird uh, like fence sitting thing because he didn't want people to criticize him. But it just made things worse. Sad stuff. I'm Boogie was the Mr. Rogers of YouTube, and antagonizing him was so unthinkable that Low Tier God made a video doing just that for almost two minutes straight, precisely oh. to try and be controversial. As anti fat phobia movements cropped up, his stature once again became a topic of discussion, and after a long time of just sure accepting it as a fact of life, Boogie spoke publicly about how he realized his obesity was actually a product of his mental issues not being properly dealt with, and that he wanted to improve. Yeah, I mean, most people who are eating themselves to death, and obviously, I mean, let's be real, I'm included, like, there's some, there's an underlying thing uh, that's part of it. You know, it could be some association with, with uh, well, it could be abuse. It doesn't have to be that crazy. It could just be, like, bad uh, habits uh, based on, like, c coping mechanisms or even celebration habits. Um, it could be impulse control problems. There's, like, a million different things that it could be. It, that's why I think that, <clears throat> the, I mean, I think that you should look at, like, being overweight as some form of, like, an addiction and, uh, and understand that the treatment method, I suppose you could say, um, needs to be a little bit more robust it, or rather, it needs to be treated like a mental health kind of an issue uh, in the sense where people need to figure out their core problems before, uh, you know, trying or they should try to lose weight. But that, figuring out the core problems is like the number one thing that people really need to do in order to correct that behavior. Um, so by getting a gastric bypass surgery to lose weight. After the midpoint of the 2010s, anti-SJW channels in the skeptic community were at their peak of relevance, and their spats with feminists and other groups were becoming increasingly publicized in conventional media. One of these feminists was Anita Sarkeesian, oh, wow. one of the main focuses of the online discussions for her belief that video games somehow encouraged sexual violence. Though people online hated her, she had enough mainstream support. Was that her perspective? I watched, I, I don't know a lot about Gamergate, and I'm sure I, I wouldn't doubt that some people were being a little too sensitive, but also my understanding was more her perspective was that like video games were just kind of sexist in the way that they would traditionally portray women it was for the most part women existed in video games uh only to be you know serving to men because they had big boobies which who doesn't like let's be fucking real about that 
Um, <clears throat> but they were mostly just like a prize for a male character. They weren't super flushed out in many instances, and they were kind of vapid. Um, so I get that, you know, and I understand people maybe wanting to create um, more robust female characters that actually did something. You know, I still want to see boobs, of course. Duh. That's why I'm fat, so I can see my own when I look down. But I don't think that there's necessarily anything inherently wrong with that. I think we're seeing that. I mean, like, in like even the game I'm playing right now, Diablo 4, like, you could play some burly-ass Bertha bitches, bro, which I think is pretty cool. You know, I could resonate with that. And my dude's fat, too. So, really, it helps me, too, because this guy's fat. And, like, you know, we, we've seen a little bit more diverse uh, male characters in games, but, we you know, we're seeing more and more fat dudes in video games, you know? You know, you got your Cull Tyrans in World of Warcraft. You got your uh, you got your Druid in Diablo 4. So that's kind of cool. You know, it does help you identify with the character more. Dude, are you kidding me with this shit? Um, it does help you identify with the character a little bit more. For sure, you know? So. Poor to get herself a panel of VidCon. Another content creator on that same panel was Boogie, who was still seen as a good guy. During said panel, Sargon of Akkad and other skeptics decided to attend, sitting in the front row. Of course, conflict erupted when Anita noticed them, and it would soon become one of the biggest dramas of the year. Boogie, I think we all know, is one of the nicest guys who there is on the entire of the website. There's not yeah. really a guy nicer than him. This perspective was echoed across Me, many videos from I'm Skeptic nicer. and commentary channels alike. Boogie kidding. himself eventually <laughs> spoke on what happened, revealing he was extremely nervous during the panel, and that after his closing statement, which was pretty mild overall and tried to minimize the static in the air, Anita came up to him and began berating him for saying his piece when she didn't have an opportunity to respond. I forgot what his what he said, but it wasn't really that bad. Like, he said uh, it was pretty decent. I remember listening to it, like, way later, and it was just kind of, like, a nice message. Uh, What is it? Would we ever be able to see it? I, you know, I don't even care enough. This led audiences to criticize Anita, saying that she was an awful human being who had Ooh, been mean to him. Boogie. Boogie then tried once again don't to de-escalate by boogie. saying that, though initially confrontational, she ended up having a reasonable conversation with him behind the scenes, and they hashed oh, things okay. out respectfully. That's However, cool. this attempt by him failed, as people noticed how uneasy he was while talking about it, and began claiming that he was cowering away from being completely honest about the situation. This Dang. exposed an issue that would later become much more glaring, Boogie's fence-sitting. Following the fallout of the Anita situation, Boogie's attempts at being a centrist who called out both sides was becoming more and more transparent, yeah. and people were seeing that he was interested exclusively in appearing to be the moderate good guy whenever he spoke well about yeah it doesn't really matter like being like a center isn't a big deal right like that's perfectly fine um the problem is is that there's no way to be like a true centrist like i from what i've seen every single topic he tries to have this middle ground opinion on but you can't be agreeable on literally every single thing like there you can't have both sides to it you know um there are just some topics that you really just gonna have to kind of choose a side in the in the public atmosphere for the most part, and it kind of comes off as you're just desperately trying to not receive criticism. And I think it's fine to be apolitical; just don't have an opinion. But the, to, to feel the need to insert yourself on a topic when you don't have a strong opinion, I think is silly. Just don't insert yourself on the topic if you don't have a strong opinion, or say I don't have a strong opinion on this. I don't really care, which is something that I'll do. So. It, it was to Sometimes. say saccharine truisms Ooh. about how making generalizations is bad instead of addressing any hey, element hey, of the controversy hey, hey, directly. Hey, hey. I get not talking about political things as to protect your brand, but why pitch in to say basically nothing? Or even worse, to say things you immediately contradict. Around this time, uh -huh. Boogie gets doxxed for the first time, which yeah, only goes to show up. what being in a one-mile radius of any political community gets you, even if you try your hardest to offend no one. Another example of his fence sitting was a video he made about YouTuber Matthew Santoro plagiarizing lists from other websites, which he immediately took down when he noticed it wasn't having a good reception. On oh, one hand, it's say? admirable to take a video down if you truly no longer stand by it. However, it seems more that he was doing this to maintain his PR instead of, you know, actually changing his mind on the topic. This is just one of many, many examples of Boogie. Yeah, man, sometimes you're going to have a bad take and sometimes you might want to take it down, but sometimes you just leave it up and like kind of let things go where they're going to go. It's not always worth doing that. And you also have to condition your audience to like un understand that you, you're not going to react to everything that they say or do. Somebody, some people might be like, I don't like this take. I don't like this. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sit on it. Think about it for a while. You know, maybe you change your mind in a couple weeks. It's a it's a little weird when people constantly change their minds immediately. Like, I understand that there are some situations where you, you fuck up. You're like, oops, I fucked up. But there are some people who are like instantly revert their decisions on something. And it's like, well, it sounds like you, that, that is just a red flag to me. You know, you should consistently be confident in your perspective enough to sit on it um you know even if you're wrong i know that, that sounds like a bad thing but a pattern of just constantly folding is pathetic so
Recently, Boogie said that people who purposely misgender others should get hit with a misdemeanor charge and even possibly jail time if it evolves into hate. <laughs> what? I personally think actually misgender somebody is, is a non-starter. If you're purposely angrily doing it, I think a slap on the wrist misdemeanor is well. What? Why? <laughs> I think you should fucking, you should properly gender people or you're a loser, but a fucking misdemeanor? What? That just sounds hinged to me. Yeah, I think you should get a fucking misdemeanor. I personally think that you should get a this demeanor, okay? Because I'm I'm not fucking transphobic, baby. I support they them people. What the fuck? What have it? That's a weird take to me that you give people a misdemeanor for that. Why? That's so bizarre. How far does that go? Um, lock, if it's actual hate speech, lock them up. I mean, I don't. The only speech I'd say that you should get locked up for is like a threatening violence. Yeah, I don't like uh, Matt Walsh either, but oh my god, I don't think that the right way to go is to put people in jail for, you know, misgendering you. You know, maybe, not to be rude, but maybe toughen up a little bit and just don't interact with people who misgender you, if, obviously, if it's possible. But that's a that good take, Boogie. Good take. I like that one. Very, speech. very trans Regardless affirming. of your opinion on this. I feel like that comes after, I feel like that comes after uh, he was, like, called out by Big or Little Joel for his weird trans take on like the um hershey stuff the chocolate i don't remember the specifics you could just look up boogie big joel and papa got to, to figure out that video if you really give, care enough to see it um or not even watch my part of it but i feel like he's all over the place even on trans issues you think that he'd have like a little be a little more stern on his perspective there this after the tweet was met with negative responses he pivoted to talking about how clips of his live stream were being taken out of context as oh, the negative God. reactions continued he slowly buckled to public pressure saying no one should go to jail because of the things they said and he just had a bad take another example of him firing off without thinking twice beforehand was when he was trying to handle the vox media scandal between carlos maza and steven crowder it though it is. began with a tweet asking for examples of people who were hurt by demonetization it quickly detoured into him deriding both steven crowder and vox in a really haphazard way, which, once again, both sides disapproved of. I don't know how he doesn't notice that doing this doesn't actually work and just makes everyone even more sick of his shtick. I'm not sure if it's some shtick. kind of pathological compulsion or if he thinks this is a smart strategy, but it could- I mean, honestly, he probably just wants people to like him because uh, because he struggled with like self-confidence issues. Probably weight-related. He wants people to like him and think he's a nice person and um, getting criticism online probably fucked him up. There, There is a point where you, on the internet, where you start getting criticism where you never have and you never stop getting criticism. And it's almost like a what did I do wrong kind of a thing sometimes. It could be your initial reaction because, you know, I've been there. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I used to be on TikTok. Uh, and it's confusing. Um, but you kind of just have to bear, grunt and bear it. Bear and grunt it, you know, because that's just going to be what happens. You're going to hit a certain point where people are going to think you're worth talking about. And they're going to start talking about you and, and criticizing you and giving you smooches on the lips, you know? Which that's my favorite part, is when they smooch me on the lips. Consistently concludes in him getting harangued by everyone online. As a means of countering this narrative, he attempted to embrace it with pride, saying that he wasn't a fence sitter, but he was a reasonable moderate. While this I approach did immediately save his credibility in the eyes of his audience, it didn't prevent users of subreddits, forums, and other sites dedicated to documenting erratic behavior from noticing it all and keeping tabs. What's crazy is that in the video where he talks about being a fence sitter, he outright admits that he doesn't care about many of the issues that he speaks on, which makes it all the more perplexing that Does he's he? still willing to. However grading it was to see, being- I wish you could show us a clip of that but what i will say is i think that that's normal it's normal to to well okay let me be clear it's normal to not be opinionated or have strong opinions on most things and it's this weird thing on the internet where everybody's expected to have strong opinions and i started doing a thing where i was like i don't care and a lot of people think that means that i don't want to talk about the topic that i'm looking at but that's not really what it is like i enjoy weighing in on dumb bullshit what it is, is it really just means I just don't have a strong opinion. And I think that that's okay to have to not have strong opinions. And I also feel like some of the issues that we have on the internet is that people feel like they need to have strong opinions on like everything. And so they have like weirdly performatively strong opinions on stuff. Where am I putting these sockets? My butt? Um, I think, oh, I'm putting them in gear here. I'm an idiot. I think that that's one of the problems. So it's okay to not have a super strong opinion because that's what I think that's part of the factor that leads to sensationalization of your content is when you, when something happens that's really not a big deal in general, but maybe to you it's not. And then you come out with such a harshly strong opinion on it that's disproportionate to your actual attitude or feeling about the situation. That's not a good thing. You don't want to, you don't want to consistently engage in that behavior. Being a fence sitter hey, was far from Boogie's only issue. 
Just as Boogie's image as the voice of reason began to fall apart, so did his marriage. In late December 2017, yeah. shortly after he got his gastric bypass surgery, he uploaded a video titled, It's True, Wife and I Are Getting a Divorce. Here's what's next for us, where he goes into detail about how it went down. Based on the information given by Boogie in this video and other instances where he spoke out, it was an amicable separation, so much so that despite it already being in their plans, his wife waited until he fully recovered from the surgery. But things certainly weren't as friendly as they were made out to seem. Later on, Boogie himself admits that their divorce agreement included a non-disparage clause that he asked for, presumably to prevent her from saying negative Jesus. things about him in a public space. Face, which could damage his reputation. Now, in fairness, relationships are- That's really interesting. I, I wonder if it's because he was really shitty, or if it's because he was a, he was just was a deathly, deathly afraid of some level of criticism on the internet. And where he's like, I don't want- Because, like, listen, people do bad things in relationships, especially when you're not with the right person. It brings out the worst in you. I've been there. Like, I'm not proud of the way I've always acted in relationships. I was never, like, abusive or anything, but I was a shithead. I would get angry. I would break stuff. Which I'm not proud of. Like, it's stuff that I've really been working on. Well, I have worked on it. It's, been, it's, it's completed. I don't break anything except for my wife's pussy. Boom. Um, and people that I've been in relationships with where I treated poorly, they treated me just as, if not more poorly. Like, it's just like you're with people that you're not meant to be with. And it brings out the worst in you. And then as time goes on, you know, you kind of separate yourself sometimes from some of the things that happen and you start thinking negatively you know i've had amicable breakups that went like really fine and we were like friends for a little bit and then all of a sudden like you know there was like hatred <laughs> came out of nowhere you know what i mean um so you know it could be because he was a shitty person or it could have just been because he was afraid of people thinking he was a shitty person both of those things are very possible but it's such a normal thing to be like to, to not have the greatest relationship moments these like fucking made for TV movies that talk about breakups as if like they're this passive, quiet little silly goose things like, oh yeah, we just didn't work out. That's I feel I feel like it. Maybe I'm wrong. Most people's relationships don't end like that. Most people have fucking breakups and they're like they are no longer with people. Like and it was it was pretty rough, you know? Often messy and emotions can come over reason for those involved. It's possible this was a reasonable cautionary measure to prevent any unnecessary reveal of information that isn't necessarily career ending, but maybe embarrassing if it were out there. But sure. on the other hand, considering she was barely even a public figure, it made many question why the contract was needed at all. Immediately after his divorce, he began dating a sugar baby. If you oh. don't know what that is, it's when a man, usually a wealthy one, offers to date a woman yep. from lower economic rungs and showers her with gifts I'm and whatnot stuck. in exchange for dinners and sex. Later on, nice. he denied that this was the case and tried to beat around the facts that he did this, claiming their relationship was Shit, or why? Man. I mean, I, I, if I had money, bro, and well, I mean, I can't even give you a scenario because when my wife wasn't around, I don't know what I, I don't know if I would be able to stay alive. Not to be rude, I'm very much in love, but, but I would fuck it. You know, if you if you're at a point where like, hey, I might give it a shot. You know, I don't know if I could do it because I feel like I, if I was with somebody and they weren't like satisfied by me, you know, I wouldn't really be able to do much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I kind of, you know, I think most people. Uh, only really get off when they're getting their partner off, but hey, God bless them. Give it a shot, dude. Give it a shot, bro. Organic and totally not a sugar baby situation. We know these to be lies because there are images of his profile on Seeking.com, a website dedicated to Seeking? sugar babies the and their sugar daddies, respectively. Eventually, he did come clean through an alt account of his on his own subreddit about half a year after the divorce had been filed. The person he was dating... Yeah, you know, sometimes it's good to come clean. Sometimes you come blood, though, and uh, you gotta go to the hospital. And uh, it's a rough time. So. Lucy Fox came out with a video called The Truth, which was promptly shared on Boogie's subreddit, and though the original is no longer up, mirrors of it are pretty easy to find. In it, she claims that Boogie was verbally abusive to her whenever she tried to be independent in any way. Besides okay. that, apparently Boogie didn't even hold up his end of the arrangement. Not only was he failing to pay her for her services, he was keeping her from doing any kind of work. Though it seems this wasn't out of jealousy, but because he wanted a caretaker around him at all times so he could keep complaining about his life and victimizing himself to her. When Maybe. this information became public, Boogie went on drama alert to defend himself, and since him and Keem were good buds at the time, Boogie had an easy time controlling the narrative about what happened and claiming that Lucy was his girlfriend and a gold digger as opposed to being an unpaid Damn. sugar baby. He went pretty much unchecked by Keemstar who tried to take a more neutral approach. But thankfully at this point, people were already realizing that Boogie was the definition of an unreliable narrator. She, you know. she said the only way she can make money is if she's at home doing her cam girl stuff, right? Um, and that you wouldn't like let her leave the house. Is, is that true? But she didn't live here. Like she lived, she lives at home, or she has her own home. But Boogie pretending this. to not have hired a sugar baby is extremely lightweight Wait, compared to his other offenses in the cap department. What other offenses you might ask? Hmm. Well, given that Boogie lied about this, people began digging through his more serious stories to try and find what else he may be lying about. Given he had always been very vocal about his rough childhood, some began comparing his multiple accounts of the abuse he had suffered at the hands of his parents. We can start with his mother. Despite occasionally praising her as a strong single woman who raised three children and took care, probably will upset a few of the studio. I was raised by a strong single woman who took care of her, uh, her invalid. 
husband and three kids while working as a preschool teacher. Women are not just as good as men. Some women are much stronger. Server, invalid okay. husband. In a Reddit comment, he says the following. I've never really gone into detail. Both my father and my mother were sexual abusers who were both sexually abusive to me, along with one other family member who's still alive, so I don't feel comfortable calling them out directly. So I'll wait until one of us are dead. I've discussed it mostly on live stream and only a little bit in videos. Sorry is that, that I'm not is that confirmed him? comfortable going into further details. Later on, while streaming, he specifies that the sexual abuse meant molestation, but not rape. How do I respond? My mother never raped me. My mother did molest me. Um, she never, like, forced me to have sex with her, but she didn't molest me. It's a simple thing. I don't know why people are like that. What the heck? <laughs> In another, he claims his dad did rape him. In this tweet, he also claims to have been raped Whoa. as a kid, and notwithstanding, claims that some good came of it. Whatever the hell that means. Then, in another tweet, he reiterates... I mean, I feel... ...raped as a kid, and not... Okay. Wow. It made me who I am today. Notwithstanding, okay. claims that some good... Big chungus. Wow. Came of it. Whatever the hell that means. Then, in another tweet, he reiterates that he had indeed been raped and that he'd forgiven his rapist, which, if we're to follow the things he said so far, would be his dad, since he claimed in a tweet that his mother had never raped him. He goes as far as saying that his sister was molested by their dad, followed by the claim that his sister was gang raped and foster uh... care. However, in a clip of his stream, he specifically says that his parents, plural, had raped him. In another of his Reddit essays, he follows the claims that he'd been raped with stories about how his mother stabbed him, his sister was almost beaten to death, his dad punching him, among other things. It's strange because, while sometimes he says things that range from suggesting to outright affirming that being raped was a common occurrence for him during his childhood, in other instances he claims it was just once. Under normal circumstances, we don't have any reason to doubt or excessively scrutinize stories of this caliber. But at this point- Yeah, I mean, everything he's saying, I would say, seems somewhat consistent. The consistent, I mean, it sounds like he had a complicated past and he uh, he essentially has some kind of, I think it's called survivor's bias, where he's like, yeah, there was good that came out of it because he, you know, he, he needs, it's like a cope. He needs to believe it. As far as the forgiveness, a lot of times people will forgive people uh, for things that they did to them for themselves. You know, uh, not holding on to that anger can be a very positive and powerful thing. So I'm assuming that's what that's referring to. I don't see any reason to not believe him when he talks about his mother being a very strong mother that took care of him despite sexual abuse. I mean, like, that's very complicated. I, you know, that's a lot. <clears throat> that's very complicated. But hey, if that's the way he feels, then, you know, yeah, God bless him, I suppose. Um, yeah, so... Boogie was raising a few eyebrows with his increasingly extreme retellings. Eventually, a more complete and precise statement of the nature of his abuse was made to Reddit. I was molested by an older sibling, female at a young age. I remember very little of it, but enough to know that this wasn't just further stuff related to my Munchausen syndrome that my mother was famous for. Certainly, inappropriate contact was made between me and my older sister several times when I was three to four. Beyond that, my mother insisted something happened with another family member. Interesting. How old was this older sister? Because, like, if he was three or four and the sister was, like, six, seven, or even ten... That points very heavily to a behavioral issue that has very much to do with the parents more than it has to do with anything else. <clears throat> um, there are some instances where kids will get like they'll start getting to an age where they get curious about that stuff and they'll start experimenting, not understanding the potential profoundly negative impact they could have on like younger siblings and whatnot. And it really is your job as a parent to make sure that you intervene and you keep an eye on people because it's something that's somewhat common to experiment with with people like or other people your age. But, you know, if he's four or something and she's like eight, that's possible that that'll happen. That doesn't make her some kind of like a pedophile. That's a that's a that's a really big issue, <clears throat> like a behavioral issue that needs to be taken care of too early so it doesn't turn into something. Um, but that's like a little bit more of like a, I guess, complicated conversation about. I guess behavioral issues. Maybe it's not that complicated. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Um, but that's that points to some kind of an inappropriateness from parents, I would say. I have no personal recollection of that, so I've always presumed that my mother was lying. But as I get older and more evidence rises to the top, the more I believe there is truth in it. What's even more complicated is that my relationship with my mother was certainly inappropriate, and those details I will take to my grave. His sister, who is on Twitter, denied that this took place, while Boogie doubled down on saying that she raped him. Now, keep in mind, before you doubt these claims, it's not uncommon for victims of abuse to be confused about what exactly they suffered, since the memories are so traumatic. But to miss- Sure, and then also, I imagine she would say that it didn't happen if- Uh, <clears throat> even if it did happen. But also, you, it's one of those things where, like, personally, I just wouldn't, I would not have a strong opinion on the specifics of what happened because I don't know, and that's just a lot going on. So, to remember and misspeak as extensively as Boogie did led many to believe that he brought his abuse up as a way to garner sympathy whenever he felt the need for validation. Some thought he was changing his story when it felt more convenient to get more sympathy. Now, I would never go out and say that he lied about being abused in his childhood. For all of that to be lies would be genuinely reality breaking. But there's a reason why many question his reliability as a narrator. In this and many other cases, he couldn't what get up? his story straight. This yeah. is just the. I mean, also, you know, and it's unfortunate, but like, you know, you're putting a very intimate thing onto the internet and you're asking people to weigh in publicly and you're doing it very often. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, 
I could see why people uh, would pick apart that story. You know, people don't want to believe horrible things like that. And of course, that's an initial reaction and constantly retelling it. Um, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I don't know the specifics, uh, but I would say, like, it seems like not, it may not necessarily be the best. <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh. Uh, be the best place to be expressing that kind of a traumatic instance. I mean, maybe if it's like very healing and cathartic for you, that's great. Um, you know, or maybe if it's supporting another story that you're telling or like another instance of in some capacity. But, you know, uh, I think probably things that are best left to discussing with therapists because, and this is something that people, especially on TikTok, need to hear talking about your trauma on the internet can just be another part of your trauma unfortunately whether in general uh, it can just contribute to it it could be embarrassing for you as you look into the future and go oh damn i wish i didn't say something like that uh people weighing in on it could obviously uh have a negative impact on your mental health and it's something that especially like younger kids need to realize when they're on tiktok talking about like some of the horrible things that may have happened to them you know <clears throat> uh it, it's a, it's may not be the best the pathway for you to, to operate in or to go down to be expressing those things uh, so brazenly on the internet. It may not help you in the future. It may make things worse for you. So just keep that in mind. Tip of the iceberg when it comes to his documented contradictions or barrage of backtracks and word redefinitions. Remember a story about how we used to do web design for CD websites? Well, that's what is typically called a massive euphemism. The truth of the matter is Boogie ran porn sites and not just Whoa. in the distant past, but well into the late 2000s when he'd already begun doing YouTube. In these sites, Evil Squared and CFPorn.com to name a couple, Boogie bad? advertised for all kinds of adult content. He also uses online space to give his thoughts on things as he would later do. Hey, as long as it's legal, baby, who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One recurring theme was nothing other than his flesh lights and i quote i think personally my fleshlight is a bit better than being with a woman in some ways no offense i figured i'd list the reasons yeah, One, she doesn't complain about the, the fleshlight doesn't complain about the smell i like it a lot <laughs> what an interesting thing uh okay it's tighter. Two, it sucks without complaining. Three, it swallows at least as deep as it can go. Four, when you're done, you can lock it in a dark place and it can't complain. Five, no need to reciprocate, but ultimately, I just flat out think it feels different and in some ways better than the real thing. Honestly, there's nothing like it. It's like the first time you pop Mary Lou's cherry at 18 or sinking it into your girl's butt for the first time. Not too tight, but oh so right. For your safety and mental health, no... That's just fucking weird, bro. Like, okay, the... Ah, oh, damn. Is that how I sound when I, like, overshare? Jesus Christ, man. It's wild, brother. Okay. Image will be attached Whatever. to the thing he's talking about, but rest assured, it's about as graceful as you can imagine. Another gem from Evil Squared is this anime villain tier self description from Boogie. The fact that I'm crazy is no stranger to the good staff at Evil Squared, nor is it a strange concept to anyone that reads this site or has viewed my videos. I am, for all intents and purposes, batch crazy. The past oh. week or so has been different for me. This next week I will never be doubly smile. so. Out into the real world, looking for real work at a real workplace, hopefully landing a job this week. I'm excited. At the same time, these normal activities remind me exactly how insane I am. I wonder if the people interviewing me know what's going on under the surface. While I'm applying for a job, entering your data, or taking your orders, or speaking to your customers, do you know that I, during the previous weekend, we all got together and smoked weed, drank, and fucked? Does she know how many orgies I've been to? Or arranged? Does what is, what is, what is this? Is this like, this, no, this isn't even true. What the fuck is happening? Does she know how many girls I've watched fuck or fuck myself? Does she know that I'm a monster? Does she know <laughs> that I have monster. internet sites that are so disorienting? Does she know that I make sex time and look at porn? I'm a monster. Wow. That's fucking so scary, dude. That's a real monster. Um, personally, I prefer prime energy drink. <laughs> that it would make Satan I've blush. It Does she know that I film more sex than she's likely to have had? Wow, On YouTube, Boogie yucky. was wholesome and reserved. Now, a lot of people are different behind the scenes than they are in their YouTube videos, yeah. and I wouldn't blame them. But it's hard to even believe that this is the same person as well, the Well, I don't I don't care about like the things he does. It's the weird cringe like, oh, I'm, I'm a fucking blah, 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 blah. I'm doing all these things. I'm a cool guy. It's, it's meant to think you're he's like a cool, edgy guy. I like to I like to orgy. I like to make porn. I like to the flashlight. It's like okay, it's just really weirdly inappropriate. It's, it's like a weird it's like a weird it doesn't even sound true. It just sounds like a story to make him look cool. YouTube videos. <clears throat> Boogie2988 really wasn't him. It's now 2018, and while he's past his peak, Boogie still has some footing in the YouTube community, but it's at this time that money became a big talking point across his various platforms. Along with a few other sob stories at the time, Boogie often mentioned his financial situation with an air of despair or concern. For example, in this tweet, he acts gotcha. as if the money that he'll be earning in the next year will be his entire savings since, as he prophesizes, his career is soon to be over and he'll go back to working retail. And this would be a very scary prospect, but it doesn't really add up. Mind 
idea with this point. He's been successful on YouTube for a decade and has over 4 million subscribers and owns his own home. He may have some more savings if not for his Funko Pop video game and toy collection, but I digress. In his many videos centered around promoting his Patreon, he says the donations are contributing towards his family's peace of mind. Again, I'm the last person in line to judge someone for wanting to cash in, but it is a little annoying when people cash in while acting like they're not doing it and are just making enough to survive. In reality, Boogie himself admitted that he made six figures yearly in his upper middle class. So at the time, he definitely wasn't in line to get a job at Target anytime soon. But what really does it is the fact that he bought the same overpriced shit box that every mouth breather online influencer also buys, a Tesla. Yes, the madman actually Hey, hey, that's a healthy car. But you know you should get it by, guys. A Kia Soul. Oh, except I had a bad interaction at the mechanic, so I don't like Kia anymore. Fuck him. It. To make matters worse, he excused his decision to do so by saying that, despite AdSense paying him poorly, which he's probably lying about, his sponsors pay well and he can easily afford a Tesla. A week later, a however, Tesla. he was back to portraying his <laughs> impoverished persona, acting like he bought a car he couldn't <laughs> afford and regretted <laughs> it. Later on, when people started throwing this at him when he tried to play poor again, he would simply pretend like he never said he bought it. Can you believe the gall you need to have to do that when you know people can print the things you say online and keep track of them? Yet another topic the he's gall. blatantly and consistently lied about is his weight. For example, during a 30 day clean eating challenge, he did to lose weight. About halfway into it, he's seen eating fried foods and candy. In a stream hey, clip. Hey, he hey, 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 Okay, fried foods and candy are healthy for your soul. They're good for your bones, your soul. They're good for your happiness temporarily until you start breathing heavy because, you know, you're, you're, you're dying. But let's not talk about that part. Let's just talk about the reality of the world, bro. Come on. Don't go, don't go so crazy. Don't be so mean, you know. He claims this is due to the fact in the event he was attending, no healthy food was available, which most certainly was a lie. Seriously, in the late 2010s with insane amounts of money and a phone with internet connection, you can't figure out how to get yourself food that isn't sugar-coated or deep-fried. And if I there really is it. nothing else, you can just I eat after or leave and come back. In late 2018, he posted an image of his scale showing that he was at 350 pounds. Then Whoa. in January of 2019, he claimed that he's now- Me too, that's pretty good. Now hitting 350, <laughs> and this is somehow an improvement. Either he somehow faked the scale's numbers in 2018, or he's lying to his audience in January, acting There's like he's- There's no way he was three- what is he, five foot tall? There's no way that he was 350 pounds what the fuck that's wild because i am like unironically 350 pounds i'm six four but I am 350 pounds. Like, there's no way this guy's 350. Three fifty. Still improving and losing weight. Keep in mind, at this point, he's You're using earnings. You're watching you in my Tesla. I want uh, weight to pick my kids up. That's incredible. He paid stuff. for a weight loss that's surgery, and his stuff. fans are cheering him on the whole time. <laughs> Why even announce this weight loss journey if you're not going to follow through or even attempt? What's noticeable is that he could just keep these things private. He never even had to announce his weight loss journey. Instead, he deliberately made it public for everyone to see, only to lie about it for what seems like no reason. And countless. Yeah, I feel like making like some kind of weight loss journey public is probably one of the like spe specifically making content out of, it especially it's probably one of the worst. Things ideas because it can be very difficult to lose weight um you know people get very impulsive etc cetera, etc cetera. so i feel like you're probably better off not turning it into some kind of a um you know that journey into some kind of like content i think it's not going to help you it's going to put like weird expectations on yourself and you're going to end up burning out even faster you know you know what i mean for instances, he can be seen drinking things like milkshakes and sodas despite having sworn these things off. While he occasionally admits that he outright failed to eat like he was supposed to in order to lose weight, he also often says that eating less makes him literally suicidal and he has no intention of actually diminishing it to any significant degree. In between the multiple glasses of soda per meal, pizzas, and cookies, it's evident that Boogie doesn't care as much about fixing his diet as he pretends to for inspirational videos on YouTube. Ah, uh, that could be possible. It's also possible that, like, he does care in waves, you know, like, honestly, people who eat, like, people who are overweight, like, drug addicts, man, like, drug addicts for can be very genuine in their expression that they want to um, lose weight and change themselves uh, and until they lose that impulse, basically. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, I can't do it anymore. It's like the same thing with, with, uh, with chonkers like myself, man. It's just the reality of the world, brother. A fitness YouTuber even tried to help him lose weight, only for Boogie to make snide comments on Reddit about how he's only after his clout and money, with more excuses about how being 350 pounds is where he's comfortable at, and statistically where he's meant to be, whatever that's supposed to mean. I don't know what that uh, means, I authenticated, yeah. authenticated, so I'm going to read from it, and it goes like this. So a ton of people link me to the video created by Everyday Day Fitness. I'll even link it here. Much appreciated, Boogie. Videos like this are not helpful. They are harmful. In a clip from a later Might stream, have been. he outright tells people concerned about his weight to go fuck themselves, and that since it's his body, it's his business, as if he hasn't made project My upon project and pity post upon pity My post, choice. trying to get some community support for his weight loss plight, only to completely dump it and act like he never wanted to do it in the first place. It's one thing to struggle with weight issues, but Boogie struggles with treating the stragglers who, for whatever miraculous reason, still give him attention and money in pursuit of his weight loss. In December of 2019, Boogie began making a number of accusations about his subreddit to people via Twitter DMs, painting them as swatters and dangerous people who are trying to destroy his livelihood oh, and shit. physically harm him. He's you should do this not go on Reddit anymore. 
Is that actually what's happening? Dad, get away from that hive mind. They are sad, <sighs> scary, dangerous people. They have scary. swatted me, attempted to destroy my livelihood. They bombard my fans and sponsors with hatred. They have done awful, terrible things. They lie to you and tell you that they want the best, but then do the worst. If they wanted the best, they leave me alone. Trust me. I've been swatted twice this month already. They letter bomb two sponsors already. They contacted a friend what of mine on Facebook and tried to convince her to stop being my friend because she was a female and I am a rapist. Yeah. With tales Jesus. that tall and claims fuck? that traumatic, it piqued people's interest. After all, Boogie already had a reputation for exaggerating things at this point. Hey, listen, separate... people on, on fucking Reddit can be toxic, so I wouldn't doubt that these people were doing those things. Reddit in question was r slash Sam and Tolki. Regarded today by many Redditors as an invaluable archive for all sorts of shady sh various e have gotten up to over the years, the sub acted Ooh. as a sort of Kiwi Farms on Reddit, documenting internet drama oh. for all. Well, Kiwi Farms is shit, too. They also go fucking crazy, and they bully the fuck out of people, so... <laughs> like One of the site's biggest threads is the exactly Boogie Criticism reputable. Mega Thread, titled, The Hidden Truth Boogie Doesn't Want You to Know. Within this thread, they detailed mm. his strange blogs we read earlier, interactions with his ex-wife, his alleged sugar babies Lucy Fox and the Grave Ghoul, and many other accusations. They point out his association with Kid Behind a Camera, who this thread calls a known child abuser. Boogie2988 just gave the least hard-hitting interview I have ever seen in my life. He glossed over abuse, allowed Michael, aka Kid Behind a Camera, to make excuses for himself and <laughs> okay. deflect from the questions that were being asked of him, and even coach Michael into making himself look like a better person. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's possible. I didn't watch it. But I remember looking at the Kid Behind the Camera stuff. It was nowhere near the body, the, the daddy of five stuff. It still wasn't good. It was an example of people prioritizing... Um, fame on youtube over probably the health of their mental health of their kids but i don't think it was like this actively horrible abusive like poorly intentioned thing that he was engaging in from what i remember now to keep things fair this entire thread does frame some lesser or honestly <clears throat> negligible defenses in the worst light possible that being said i think the key takeaway from this is that regardless of the less hard hitting criticisms the boogie here? on youtube was hardly in line with the boogie portrayed in that thread he was a completely different person away from the camera it wasn't even close to who he let on he was in his 10 minute rants but regardless of that criticism boogie was now oh, claiming that subreddit and its users had swatted him not once but twice in one month curious as to the validity of these claims one of the people who runs a subreddit by the name of haberdasher a went through all of the moderation logs for the month of december to see if he could find any evidence of the claims that the subreddit was involved but to no avail when he asked for any evidence of boogie's claims of swatting his story did what it always does when pressed for veracity it started to change with him now claiming he didn't know who in particular had swatted him while still insisting that it did happen i mean it's possible again i wouldn't doubt it reddit's a very toxic place so. obviously i have no idea of knowing who swatted me and never said i did just said i got swatted twice last month oh. Once when I was away at the Game Awards and another over Christmas break. This is true. Two times, cops came out with a partner and an ambulance. Seeing as Steven has still failed to provide any actual evidence for the things he was saying, Haberdasher decided to look into Boogie's... That's why maybe sometimes it's it's okay to keep things private, you know? Plus, if you actually did get doxxed, it might not be the best idea to... to um, it display it anyway, because then people are like, Oh, it worked. I've got a rise out of him, you know? local police stations so. publicly available logs to see if they'd ever been to his house. <clears throat> the police department couldn't. public They're dispatch saying. logs show that no officers were sent to Boogie's place of residence in the entire month of December. When they confronted Steven Shit. with this information, he claimed that he had made an arrangement with the Fayetteville Police Department to purge the dispatch records after a welfare check in July of 2019. I think it should be clear to anyone with half a brain that this was another lie and that Steven is just Maybe, shooting himself in the foot trying to cover up a lie with another lie. And if that wasn't <clears> enough, <throat> the Fayetteville Police had dispatch logs of a welfare check in November 2019, nearly four months after Boogie had claimed that they stopped keeping records of welfare checks on him. When he was in Informed of this, Boogie responded by saying that the police had made a mistake and that he didn't know why there would be a record. It should be noted that the state where Boogie lives, Arkansas, has state law that requires that records be kept of all dispatches, so even if he tried to get such an arrangement with the police, he wouldn't be able to. It's against the law. Did Boogie 2988 get the governor's permission? When asked via email, Fayette Well, I mean, it's still possible just because they have to keep records doesn't mean that they couldn't have gotten some kind of a deal to take the record out. I'm not saying it happened. I'm just saying that it's, I don't, that doesn't really, just based on that law, it doesn't immediately sound like he couldn't have worked out a deal uh, to have that taken away for him. And some, I don't know why he would um, have the call logs taken out. It just seems a little unlikely to me. Like, what? why would they even do that? <clears throat> um, but, you know. Hey, baby, the police look. stated that under no circumstances would they not have a dispatch record of a visit to someone's residence. For Boogie to not be lying about the users of the subreddit in this situation, the only possible explanation is that the police station doesn't follow the law about police dispatches, lies via emails, and has a secret deal with Boogie to not make record of welfare checks to his house so that internet trolls will not be able to yeah. bother him on Twitter anymore. Not, pretty not only likely. that, but Boogie, in all of his infinite wisdom, would have to leak the news of this secret deal with the police in which he would be implicating himself in order to prove that he was telling the truth. You see how these things don't quite add up? And it's such an idiotic thing to lie about. Once again, he made 
make completely unnecessary claims that he did not need to when he could have no, just ignored true. the sub altogether. But I guess the craving to make yourself out to be a victim is too hard to resist. After yeah, I mean, they, they probably are toxic, and maybe he was being disproportionate just to fucking try to get rid of them or something. I don't, I don't really know what the logic is. Just ignore it. You know? Being caught with this mountain of evidence against him that pretty much proved that he had been lying, he finally admitted to lying about the whole thing. But of course, oh, he couldn't shit. do it the right way and be honest that he had been, you know, lying. Because it if he did that, fault, then he has bro. to admit that he did something wrong. And not in a disingenuous way, in a way that would show some actual humility and maturity. You know, basic human being things. Instead, his statement was that all of this had been part of an elaborate master plan to bait his critics into thinking uh, that he was lying. Ah, yes. The, the old master bait. That's the one. That's the one I'm always thinking of doing. You know, it makes perfect sense, Booger go after him. He claims that he intentionally falsely accused his critics and his local police department of oh, committing a federal shit. crime for fun. Let's see what the master manipulator oh, wannabe had shit, to say. Dude, so I always have a bunch of people me. tweeting at me for attention ever since I talked to one critic this summer. So I took advantage of that and slipped into DMs a few weeks back and filled one guy with misinformation I knew he would leak mixed with the truth. I'm a oh, terrible liar shit. and reading it back is so cringe. Claimed I dated a 43 year old woman for almost <laughs> a year. Said I was writing a book, half true, and all kinds of other stuff. Was hoping it would keep them busy. It sure did. It was like they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. One of the things I said was that I got two visits from the cops in December. Now, that's not so much of a lie because I got maybe four visits last year. I just shifted the dates around. Had no clue they would latch onto that one like they did, though. To prove me wrong, they literally looked up my home address and cross referenced it via police records to try to discredit me. But in the Damn. process, actually proved I got swatted. If these people just applied like a tenth of the effort that they do in fucking with Boogie, they would be very successful in their uh, chosen careers, you know? That's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild i know that's not true obviously that uh, it's a fake i mean it's obviously he's just coping there but um it's interesting that they they obviously did do all this very uh <clears throat> good investigative research here three times last year, providing the dates, making it easier to find my address, by the way. I mean, they literally violated Reddit policy by making it easy on a thread to find my home address. It could even get their subreddit shut down. Absolutely insane. What's even crazier <laughs> is that they tried to make it seem like I blamed them for the SWAT. I didn't. This was, of course, horribly manipulative Maybe? and something I would normally never do. I have a friend in PR and she recommended giving them misinformation, and I figure I have nothing to lose at this point, so why not I have, have fun friend with it? In but wow, PR. It I'm sorry if this disappoints you, but after years of being what harassed friend? by these people, I just wanted to take some control back. I just can't believe how awful it made them. What friend in PR? Like, what, a fucking YouTuber? rep manager or something like what friend in pr are we referring to <clears throat> the fuck are you talking about look doxing me then spending hours going through PR. police records to discredit me horrible obsession gone awry i feel really dirty and awful i don't like lying and i don't I like manipulating shot, though but i figure if they were going to call me that i may as well take that and use it against them nothing in the world more dangerous than someone who has nothing left hey guys hey guys check this out i'm not doing very well content wise and i need money so what i'm gonna do is i'm and i know it's a lie but i'm going to create this entire fabricated event where <laughs> Uh, to try to troll people with misinformation. I'm going to spend my time doing that instead of making content. I mean, that's just incredible stuff. That's just incredible stuff, so have to lose though i recommend watching out it's Makes textbook misdirection you see if you try to do due diligence on the lies he spins you're actually the weirdo for being obsessed when this was pointed out as well two things can be true once <laughs> <laughs> Some people are weirdos for being obsessed, let's be real. Reckless and irresponsible behavior. Oh. He DM'd someone on Twitter saying he wasn't afraid of potential jail time for pulling the prank he did. In response oh, to backlash shit. from even his own fans on YouTube, Boogie stated that he was glad he lied about swatting and is willing to keep doing it if it makes his critics look bad. If it hasn't okay. become clear to you already, allow me to spell it out to you. Though he might not have the most malicious of intentions, he is clearly very unstable and unfit to be on the internet, as it seems to exacerbate <laughs> Maybe, every yeah. problem he has. I know it's technically his job, but if the way that he responds to criticism is by lying to such an extent that it ventures into the realm of criminality that could lying. land him in actual jail, I think it's better for him Down. to miss out on whatever money After he can make sense by staying online in order to preserve his liberties. However hard to believe, considering how insane things already are, there's even more to this story. Not Ooh, even a bitch. day after he tried to pretend that he was on some kind of elaborate operation to troll the trolls, Boogie's Twitter profile name was changed to period. Meanwhile, his profile and banner pictures were removed. Shortly after the bizarre profile change, Boogie posted to his TikTok to say that his Twitter had been hacked by that hate subreddit. Now, obviously, it's rather Open suspicious the fucking that they door, bitch. Boogie's account, presumably where there's a lot of information stored in Twitter DMs, and then proceeded to do nothing other than delete a few tweets and leave his account alone. Especially yeah. given his previous day of lying for hours on I mean, listen, bro, you should just deleted your fucking Twitter, man. Like, Twitter's toxic as hell. Like, engaging on there, you don't get paid, and it's a waste of fucking time. It just stresses you out, so just delete it. It's stupid. It's full of, like, people making disproportionate criticism. Like, just delete it. Ace, most people on the sub, and even in his general Twitter following, were skeptical of the story. One person on Twitter took him to task on it. Why did they leave the channel link, stream promotion, and literally everything else? How isn't your Gmail compromised? Dude, just stop. <laughs> to which Boogie replied, If I was faking this, I would have absolutely deleted those things. If I was faking, I would have left a breadcrumb trail to Kiwi Farms or elsewhere. But they want to frame me as a liar, and you took the bait. Basically, he immediately gets defensive and tries to act as if it's somehow obvious that the supposed hacking couldn't have been his work. Of course, he doesn't provide any proof that he was hacked. He uh, just goes around. Well, actually, he uh, worked in the HTML field for a long time so boogie probably is a professional hacker 
So all this makes sense because Boogie is a pro hacker because he works in the hacker field. He's a professional. You can't hack the hacker. Okay, so basically it was all set up and I proved it just now. He is literally, he is the guy known as 4chan and he hacked it. We're on Twitter getting into petty slap fights with random strangers about how he's definitely not lying. A day later, Boogie claimed that he got his account back and made a tweet claiming that the hacker used the streaming app Mob Crush to hack into his Twitter account. He also oh, posted oh, the IP oh, address of all the recent logins in order to prove that he had been hacked from the app. Mob Crush then made an official statement on Twitter stating that it was impossible for a hacker to gain access to a user's Twitter account in the manner Boogie was describing, and that <laughs> the IP Boogie had posted was from their own AWS servers, showing that Boogie had indeed Damn. lied about being hacked. In typical um, Boogie yeah, but obviously they would lie about it to protect their brand, so Boogie, you know, you guys just don't like booger i mean i guess that is possible but i wonder what his response is he fashion he claimed that the people on the subreddit were lying and that he indeed had been hacked but that he could not actually prove his own statements and all evidence pointed to him being wrong Damn. came back to twitter for one thing why would i fake a hack to remove those tweets if i was making a video admitting to the thing i deleted still no clue how i got hacked but use your brain it's pointless to hide a tweet about something that i'm uploading in 24 hours i mean he's right it would be extremely dumb to fake a hack to remove those tweets about something that you're posting within a day if you really want to talk about what's the most probable explanation to this incident it's much much more likely that boogie faked the hack in order to have something to make the subreddit that has been outing you as a pathological lying freak look bad. There's something called qui bono, which is the principle that in order for a conspiracy to happen, there must also be someone benefiting from it. Look at who may benefit, and you probably have your culprit. The only person that could possibly benefit from this harmless hack was Boogie himself, since it would only make the subreddit look bad. If there was any compromising information True. about him that got leaked, then that would cast doubt on it being Boogie at all, because why would he leak that, right? But if there's no compromising information, it's just a hack, the only evidence doesn't seem to add up, and the only account of it is coming from Boogie, well, you can probably guess where it came from. To top this all off, he made a video called Boogie2988 Exposed, where he claims he's working with the FBI to stop the harassment campaign on him. When people start- Why? My question is, why are fat guys so horny all the time? You know, it's always, there's always some fat dude doing some- <laughs> It's always some fat dude doing some inappropriate shit, bro. What are they doing? Fucking doing all this hacking stuff, making posts about jerking off or whatever, or whatever. Talking to girls. <laughs> On OnlyFans and stuff. People, these guys are disgusting. <laughs> what are these guys doing? We gotta stop fat men. Justifying inappropriate images on Twitter. What are you doing? It's going through your brains. It's like the arteries are clogged. Maybe, maybe... It's possible that Boogie's blood sugar is so high from his diabetes that he's like drunk. And I know you're probably like, probably that's stupid. No, nah, not really. My my wife uh, talks about how she's had to know somebody at her job that sometimes her blood sugar gets so high that like it smells like she's like alcohol in her breath. Apparently, that's a thing. And sometimes when I get a, eat a little too much sugar, I get like a little loopy, a little like a little like oh, what's going on here? Sending poop pics. That's true. That is that's a that's a different breed of fat horny guy though. But you're right. <clears throat> um, I'm just saying, man. You know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe these fat dudes be tripping. You'd think that being so big would ruin, like, a fat person's sex drive, but... I'm going strong, baby! I'm going strong. What is this? Okay, cool. It's just a portal. Started laughing at this attempt at intimidation and mass. He deleted the video, but luckily for us, it has been re-uploaded. These lies being exposed also called upon another situation that, at the time, nobody had thought to question. In What's June of 2017, happened? Boogie appeared on the H3 podcast. There, he told a story about how someone uh, on the deep web, in his words, put out a Bitcoin offer to have him assassinated. Deep the address that gets leaked Jesus. the first time eventually the neighbor's must right. have been a... The address that gets leaked the first time Wasn't is my, my neighbor's address, yeah. my friend's address. Uh, and so when they put the uh, assassination hit on Tor Network... Man. They sent it to my house then to show, like they sent an email to me, hey man, you need to see this. Given everything we've seen so far, I'd say that's a likely story. It was at this point Boogie got himself into a situation he never expected, <laughs> and one that gave him the opportunity True. to be the victim he desperately desired to be seen as. In the middle of 2020, YouTuber Frank Hassel began interacting with Boogie's account online, mocking him for having blocked him and generally being a nuisance towards him. At the time, it seemed like Boogie had no idea who Frank even was. Eventually, this pressure on Steven mounted to the point where he and Frank went at it on- Why didn't he just ignore Frank Hassel? Frank Hassel's obviously just trolling him for like some kind of attention and clout, so- The killstream, which resulted in an extremely one-sided battering on Boogie's path 
pathological lying. In what looks like a desperate attempt to get Frank to relent from attacking him, Boogie DMs Frank saying that he's welcome to kill him as long as Frank doesn't hurt his family, friends, and Whoa. dog. Frank's trolling campaign Not on Boogie only became more extreme as time went on, but then Don't posting a picture dog. of himself in front of Boogie's house saying, this is my house now. Boogie calls his bluff saying that he won't show up because he's a coward, while simultaneously suggesting that he shouldn't show up because he would be shot. Eventually, as most of you uh, probably already know, idiot. if you have even a cursory amount of knowledge about Boogie or Frank, okay. eventually this confrontation took place in real life. Frank showed up to Boogie's doorstep with a GoPro strapped to his forehead, insulting Boogie in whatever ways he could think of, and Boogie came out with a revolver. After a who, who would have thought? Who? <laughs> I guess I didn't really know that much about that. But like, why would you invite that type of situation to happen to you, Boogie? Like, no, the guy shouldn't have showed up. But like, why would you invite that onto yourself? Like, why would you play tough guy? Like, who would even... It's not even tough to be like, show up to my house. Like, that's weird. It's like unhinged behavior to even... Like, that's off... That's online behavior. Terminally. Terminal. Spinal. You know? A couple of minutes of them going back and forth, Boogie shot a warning shot, and Frank left. Though, thankfully, both parties came out unharmed, Boogie shot a gun in a school zone, which landed him Damn. in county jail, which he was bailed out of at the tune of $5,000. When it comes to assessing what happened here morally, there's a strong case to be made that Boogie was unjustly harassed in the situation. But for most people, the ends justify the means because the entire thing was just too funny to ignore. This whole situation made Boogie back away from social media, but this was only temporary, as in June of 2021, he returned with a video about his arrest. Despite everything that had happened, from being arrested, charged for his reckless shooting of a firearm into the air, and the amount of people making in front of him, Boogie had finally managed to recapture some semblance of relevance. This video has more than 600,000 views, which is the best he had done in a while. And for once, Ooh. he was a genuine victim. He didn't have to lie. He had something real to complain about. This was a make or break moment for Boogie. He was being talked about by Scarce, Drama Alert, and every internet news outlet under the sun. He could either spin this story into another wave of popularity by making some genuinely great content now that he had all eyes on him, or repeat Well, that's unlikely. Unless he was already making the content, he's not going to just be able to go back. I think that's one of the things is that, um, making good content isn't like something that's necessarily intentional right like a lot of times you might there are, there are probably so many people on youtube who already make great content but nobody really knows who they are um and so like they just don't really have the access to it it's more like you have to consistently make content that you hope is good um and then when you get a, a boost you're lucky to maintain that boost bro would you stop pushing me dude all right make it be bullying me dude it's fucked up of his past and once again fade into irrelevance. As you can probably Easy. guess, we didn't get the good ending. For the past half decade, Boogie has had a pretty dedicated group of observers going over all of his controversies and compiling information about him. Apart from Sam and Tolkien, which was banned, many of these guys congregate on the typical lolcow sites. After the subreddit that talked about Boogie was shut down, the discussions were relegated either to lolcow itself, which was far from being as easy to access and normie friendly as Reddit and Kiwi Farms. A lot of people treat the farms like they treat 4chan, as an evil boogeyman that does nothing but harm. PR wise, Boogie had it easy, as his most fervent opponents started out with the massive disadvantage of being known as the gathering spot for the scum of the earth. Much like 4chan, for every good and informative of posts that's backed up by the evidence and well-done research, there's three or more chain. posts spewing absolute nonsense. But if you're in the business of researching eccentric, esoteric, and otherwise extraordinarily screwed people, as I am, you're condemned to sit through it with the patience of a Buddhist monk. As it turns out, the boogie threat on Kiwi Farms is gigantic. With over what a weird life to like just be obsessed with locales. <laughs> This <laughs> is so weird to me, dude. 1,200 well. pages of nothing but people dunking on the guy. Damn, Personally, well. despite all I've covered, I don't hate him as much as I feel pity and annoyance, but that's besides the point. More recently, a development from the site has been the idea that Boogie is currently running sock accounts to get back at his haters. It all started with Boogie Truth, Not a Twitter sock. account that has collected content that criticizes Boogie for quite some time. As you can see, it's relatively small and doesn't get a ton of engagement, getting 20 likes on a tweet on a good day. Enter this post on Kiwi, where someone is remarking that this account, Nightly Girl 4, is responding to the Boogie Truth account saying, well, maybe if it weren't for the hate sites and stalkers, he wouldn't have to worry about staying off social media. Media. We also oh have a no, dude. Oh no. Is this a fake boogie account, bro? <laughs> is this a is this a fake boogie account, dude? Is that what we're about to learn here, bro? Damn. I feel like that's what we're about to hear here. We're about to hear here. That this is some fake ass fucking boogie clone website or whatever. This is gonna be embarrassing as fuck for my man. Applied a shoe on head saying that. Now, if we go to Twitter to take a look at this account, we can see that the only thing they do for the most part is interact with Boogie. They retweet no. all of his stuff, they compliment him, no. they insult anyone who is critical of him, and they have no. a particular hatred for Frank. It's, a, it's, it's definitely possible, but there also are pe like girls who are obsessed with like people in like that community too. Um, so it's possible that she's real, but I don't know, man. I don't know, bro my brothers, my brothers and sisters in Christ. What do you all think? 
Frank Hassel, who at this point was seen as Boogie's arch nemesis. They tweeted H3, trying to get Ethan's attention to talk about Boogie, and they weirdly insult Boogie's dad and call him a rapist. This is quite unusual, since people were already heavily doubtful of Boogie's stories about his CSA, to the point where the thought of anyone calling him a rapist based on the things Boogie has said was far-fetched. When taking a look at the bio for this account, we see she describes herself as a cute goth girl just living her life. Now, if we look at Google Images and simply type in cute goth girl, this is one of the first results, so this obviously isn't her. Whoever made this account just ripped it and used it as a profile picture, but that's not abnormal, right? A lot of people use pics that don't belong to them or pics of other people as their profile images. But let's be honest here for a second, don't what person self-identifying as a cute goth girl would be a fan of Boogie2988 of all people? And not just a fan, mind you, an obsessive fan who does nothing but talk to and about Boogie all day. <laughs> sure, anyone can make a Twitter account and claim to be whoever, so it might be some Anon that's a uh, Boogie whomever? fan pretending to be a cute goth girl. However, who has the motivation to be a steadfast defender of Boogie know, in modern day besides Boogie himself? This incongruence was accentuated when another similar account began popping up, this one called a Busty Girl 69 This account was suspended, but from a screenshot, we can see that it was made the same month as the other account, with the same super Busty basic bio scheme, as well as a picture of some random baby. chick from Google Woo. Images with a flag for a banner. One noteworthy interaction from this person was that Busty when someone messaged girl. them being admittedly pretty mean, they took it very personally, sending back an image of Goatsy accompanied by the following message. Fuck you, piece of shit, scrotal-faced hate stalker. Fuck Whoa. you, Kiwi Farms. Fuck Frank. You guys caused me more stress and I hope you die. Get blocked. This sounds quite like a certain YouTuber we've come to know and despise. It almost reads like breaking character, clear as day. Not only because the bit. reaction was so angry, but also because Frank and Kiwi Farms are explicitly singled out, which just reeks of Boogie being extremely salty about having his good guy persona picked apart so brutally by them. Another account, this one called Nocturnal Walrus, was created a month apart from the other two, also following the same format, with a typical praise for Boogie and fixation on his haters. Someone did the diligence of comparing the times of interaction on the Nocturnal Walrus account, and we see that on April 29th, Boogie's first tweet of the day was at 4.24 p.m. Coincidentally, the first tweet of the day on the Nocturnal Walrus account was just a few minutes later. Boogie Damn. also went out of his way to respond to them specifically. Now, it's worth noting that the account posting this then goes on to call Boogie a morbidly obese pedo, only half of which is true, but the screenshots are certainly compelling. This is followed up which half? with a more compelling post comparing the dates, and we see that this is a trend for this just account. Kidding. They always kidding, respond guys. to Boogie, they only respond to Boogie, and the times always line up. The more people looked into these patterns, the more similar accounts turned up. Eventually, word of this made its way around Twitter until it found its way back to Boogie, who decided to respond with his usual spiel, claiming that people will believe anything anyone says about him and claiming it's ridiculous to think he would ever pull such a thing, when okay. he obviously would pull such a thing. Well, th 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 hopefully that's where he leaves it. Hopefully he's just like, that's ridiculous, guys. You're all silly. And then just leaves it there. Um, hopefully he doesn't figure out a way to specifically incriminate himself to make it seem true. Thank you, his track record. People out here believe that anyone who says something positive about me is just me on another account. Prove them wrong and say something nice. This is yet another example well, of Boogie's not so- I would expect the person saying something positive of you, to be honest with you, would be an another fat person, to be real. Um, not a bunch of attractive goth women, girls, whatever. Um, you know what I mean? Because I can see the empathy factor. Stop bullying Boogie! Leave Boogie alone, you know, like, but like the Britney Spears meme. Am I hip? So. Competent attempts at double speak. Here, while he does imply that the account is not his, he doesn't actually claim it. Instead, he suggests that people begin saying positive things about him to prove that he isn't the only person who could say good things about himself. Clearly, he's begging for some kind of validation from fans who now were more scattered than ever since the guy they were a fan of was self destructing in front of his own audience. Some people bought this defense from him, but I have to say that if you did, then you either don't know much about Boogie or you're desperate to believe in this nice guy. Well, uh, well, the nice guy thing, yeah. But if they believe that, like, he didn't make the account fake or whatever, like, who cares? Again, something I wouldn't... Ha if it turned out to be true, I would just be like, oh, okay, I'm not surprised. <laughs> just kind of go about my day. Uh, sounds like Mr. Mr. E, Mr. Boogie, wouldn't doubt that. A narrative. All in all, for whatever qualities he may have, Boogie is severely terminally online and has been very for way true. too long, which tops. is bad enough if you have no mental issues. He's been known to lie very flagrantly for weeks on end to make himself look like a victim in situations, and I honestly believe that he's the one running these sock accounts. It's either that, or someone is trying to frame him by making the accounts, but at this rate, we have a boy who cried wolf situation. <laughs> what a deep troll that would be. Somebody is like, they're pretending to be a Boogie fan on a fake account so that people will think that it's not actually Boogie. That would be fucked up, but also kind of impressive <laughs> that would be almost impressive to be absolutely honest with you it would be fucking wild where even if boogie isn't the one pulling the strings this time his rep is so bad that it will never be figured out even if he has lied in the past i don't think he would accept defeat this quickly it doesn't really make sense to me furthermore boogie specifically sought out the replies of this account to respond to this person accusing the account of being an alt rather than address it publicly you would think about all the hate he gets he would be able to just ignore it but he has consistently shown himself completely unable to let go time and time again he compulsively has to go through the replies expose himself to all well, the i said like i don't think this dude has like a friend in, in real life to keep him grounded in reality you know, I think that's his biggest problem is not having somebody to ground him. And so he just kind of succumbs to the terminally, terminally online behavior. And that's his biggest problem, bro. So stop. So stop that. Don't do that no more. Don't do that no more.
real and engage with it. I mean, even if there was a troll doing this, they would have to be the least intelligent troll ever. What is the point of pretending that Boogie runs alts to respond to people? What actual damage would that him. even do when you compare it to the massive list of other lies he's told? I'm this pales in comparison weird. to the swatting, weird. but the over- I, I think that if it is a troll, it would be a very master troll. It would be f pretty fucked. And like, no, it, it just makes Boogie look even worse. Like, I mean, I, could you imagine somebody gets on, waits for Boogie to tweet, waits like four minutes, then tweets themselves at him in this over-affirming way that comes off as like kind of disingenuous? Uh, that would be really fucking crazy. Arcing truth of the matter is, it actually doesn't matter at all to anyone whether the alts are his or not. Well, to anyone except Steven. He needs everybody to know that in his free time, he's definitely not making fake accounts to pretend that he has dedicated fans who all happen to be super hot cutie 3.14s, by the way. Cute One of the most revisited parts of Boogie's backstory is the fact that poverty is something that looms in his background. From growing up dirt poor, to living in his brother's apartment in his early adulthood, to being on disability for a total of three years from age 34 to 37, Boogie Man. has always had issues with money. After he began making some off of YouTube, this issue was soothed to a great extent, but as it turns out, the problem isn't just with money itself, but with the mentality he has when it comes to finance. In 2017, about a decade into his YouTube career, Boogie took an interest in cryptocurrencies. That January, Bitcoin's value broke- Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised that poor people aren't good with money. Like, how do you learn to be good with money when every time when you don't have any right and anytime you make a mistake it's pretty much just life altering you know the difference between a rich person and a poor person sometimes is that rich people just have the money to recover from bad, fi bad financial decisions so like yeah i wouldn't doubt that there's a factor there broke the thousand dollar barrier it then doubled tripled and by the end of the year skyrocketed to over 19 grand this immense growth led many people to become millionaires overnight that included some youtubers of whom boogie became quite envious of he tweeted out remember when bitcoin was 800 bucks i had 10k in savings at that time and didn't invest because i didn't believe it would increase in value that would have sold for over two hundred thousand dollars today wow. i hate myself he then lamented that he'll never be a millionaire now which is probably only true if he's talking about liquidity because if we're to consider his house part of his net worth he's most definitely a millionaire already many were quick to point out that his hesitancy to invest was a good thing is you shouldn't invest more than you're willing to lose. Yeah, Boogie, sure. however, all he saw was that other people got something that he didn't and he was unwilling to hear a second opinion. Yeah, what an interesting perspective to be like. Because like we all look and go like, oh, that'd be cool if we make money, right? Um, If we were able to be rich or whatever. But like, I don't know. I don't look back and go, I wish I invested into a, this, into a thing. Um, I just don't think that way. I feel like that's not, that's a kind of like a toxic way to engage, no? I, oh, I, I should have invested in, you know, this thing. I don't know. Like, I don't regret not investing. Um, it's a weird thing to regret, I think. This is like a toxic mentality, especially since it's, such, it's a gamble. I'm talking about gambling. People who got Bitcoin were all d dumb. <laughs> it was a huge gamble that they were hoping would pay. It did. It was good for them, but like, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a, I guess, sure thing. And yet, though no one can know for sure, it's perhaps that goal that led him to treat these investments as tools for gambling. After seeing how much he could have made on Bitcoin, Boogie bought a small amount of Ethereum at a friend's recommendation. They told him it was projected to grow 10 times in value. It was priced at $120 at the did time, it? which places his purchase in May of 2017. Ethereum grew throughout the year, reaching over 1,000 by January 2018. This meant Boogie made eight times his initial investment, a massive relief during Man. an otherwise stressful point in time. You see, just weeks prior was when his then-wife filed her divorce. Though Boogie got to keep the house and car, she was given half their savings. While this still left him with more money than what a lot of people see in their lifetime, it pushed him into a midlife crisis. He claimed that during their marriage, he spent next to- I'm, surpri I'm surprised that he didn't, uh, she didn't get more. Sounds like she didn't even get half. Uh, so, you know, interesting. Nothing, which again, I'd safely venture to say is some major cap. Because of this, he attempted to recapture his youth by indulging in toys. He then refurnished the house, spending thousands on new furniture. And as previously mentioned- uh, I don't believe that he, that he, <laughs> he probably always had collectibles. I don't believe that he didn't engage in collectibles until after he was rich. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't believe that. Get the fuck out of here. Boogie created an account on a sugar baby website to find some poor girl he could spend extravagant amounts of cash on. There oh, well, she's not, a, not a really a poor girl. She's on a sugar baby website. You know, she knows what she's getting herself into on that one. Not a poor girl. I mean, she might be literally poor, but like she wants, it's a lot of poor girl. She wants to engage for money worth at half a million dollars and an annual income of 150000 He later claims that this helped him cope and dull the feelings of loneliness. Unfortunately, this Damn. prosperity came to an end when crypto began to plummet. Bitcoin dipped as low as $3,000 with other currencies faring far worse. Ethereum's fall was one of the most drastic, losing 94% of its value over the year. Damn. Once again, Boogie kicked himself for not trusting his gut. I thought about selling off my initial investment in crypto when Ethereum was worth 1500 Now it's worth 500 and falling. Easy come, easy go, I guess. I've lost so much in Ethereum this month that if I lost every dime of this, I wouldn't even notice. It's important it's interesting that he felt really like financially empowered when he had money in ethereum but like he didn't actually use the money so like he wasn't financially empowered you know what i mean it was just like sitting in this like you know magical space of non-existence because crypto is fucking weird to me man money is bizarre what a bizarre concept sometimes i get it but then also i don't you know
To remember that back then, crypto was just something he toyed around with, as Boogie had far more lucrative revenue streams. In 2013, Yo, he claimed he was making 25000 a year on YouTube too, alone. This too, amount me, obviously me, went up as he became more popular, too, but it was eventually threatened during the apocalypse of the late 2010s, in which advertisers became more strict in what they were willing to support. Seller. His main channel what was caught in the crossfire, being seller. blacklisted for many ads. Thanks to his positive reputation, however, he wasn't affected as heavily as others. He was able to recoup a significant amount through merch sales and sponsorships, which by 2019 he claimed made up 90% of his income. He made so much, in fact, that it was during this time that the Tesla debacle happened, with him claiming he put it down payment on one. Had he maintained this, Boogie would likely still be fine today in spite of his woes. But in the background, a controversy began to erupt. As previously mentioned, after his divorce, glimpses of his manipulative and malicious behavior began to become more and more apparent. This left many fans disillusioned with Boogie and his content, especially after Lucy Fox's video on him. So they began digging, uncovering a long history of bizarre statements and inconsistencies. By the time Sam and Tolkien got to him, there was a decent case to be made that he was a pathological liar, among a host of other terrible traits. This erupted in February 2019 when the mega thread was made. This was then adapted into a YouTube video by Christopher Tom, which has nearly 4 million views views. The deconstruction of his persona and subsequent backlash kneecapped his career. Consequently, there was an immense pressure on sponsors to distance themselves from him. By mid-2020, Boogie claims that his 4 million sub channel was generating little to no income. I'm making a few bucks, not enough to call it a living. My Patreon only brings in 130 bucks a month because I never promote it. I make maybe a few hundred a month from donations as I never- Yeah, he also doesn't make any content, so no shit like he's not doing well. Like, at this time, I don't think he was really making any content. Like, he was just trying to cash in on doing nothing. Retire at, like, what, 40? You know, you gotta work- forever <laughs> which i don't think is a bad thing i mean who doesn't want to do a little bit of work he's gonna do right stream. AdSense is mostly non-existent now. Sponsors are rare. Thankfully, there was one last refuge for Boogie, the Ethereum from all those years back that he'd never sold. For years, he continued to hold out hope that one day, it'd go straight to the moon. Because he publicly mourned his losses a year prior, to say people were skeptical is an understatement. They restlessly waited for the day that he lost it all, and in every yeah, other aspect mean. of his life, that year was <laughs> soul-crushing. In addition to losing his main source of income, he got into his very public feud with Frank Hassel, which ended in Boogie firing a quote-unquote warning shot that resulted in his arrest. Now, in addition to his already fleeting income, he had to hire an attorney, being forced to spend over $30,000 dollars on trying to keep himself out of jail. But perhaps, as a rare moment of divine intervention, Boogie hit the crypto jackpot. In March of 2020, Ethereum was priced at approximately $130. Oh, it appreciated shit. slowly until October when the value increased rapidly. By January, it was worth over $1,200, bucks, and three months later, that doubled. This oh, growth continued fuck? until November, with That's the currency cool. peaking at nearly $4,500. Boogie was undoubtedly rolling it at this point. But, like in many other instances, this second chance quickly oh, began well, being abused. Boogie started deep. bragging shortly after the first thousand. He wasted no time rubbing it. Hey, listen, the best thing you could do after you make some money is brag about it, baby. You know what I mean, fuck you. Get money, get paper, get paid, get laid. I brag about it by having a wall of lounge flies that I still haven't showed any. But you guys, we, I know you want to see them. We want to make a video on the Robin Dan channel, which is doing phenomenally. Uh, you know, that's soon. I'll be able to retire this channel, and I'll just be able to focus on that. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But um, incredible stuff faces of the Redditors, saying, whenever the market does well, I think back to an old Reddit post earlier this year during the crash that said, thank God Boogie's losing all his money. How spiteful this person must have been that he hoped millions of people would go broke. Ah, uh, yes, luck has uh, has come upon me, and I shall brag about it. <laughs> why do you feel the need to always brag about everything? Like, just shut the fuck up, man. It's not helpful for you. That's why people keep weighing in on you. Just chill. I could lose my meager savings. He then announced he'd be quitting YouTube as he no longer needed a job. This is because he invested far more... <laughs> Dude, come on. He's just quitting YouTube, bro. What is up with that shit? It's so weird to me. I, I like just do some work. Like, all you have to do is, like, a fucking half hour of work every day. It's too much for you, dude. A crypto then he let on. In the summer of 2019, Boogie was very openly suicidal. He even threatened to take his own life at VidCon, forcing several YouTubers to intervene. Man, it was this unwillingness to live it? that led him Just to contemplate. He claims that if he was going to die anyway, he may as well gamble away his savings. So, at the supervision of Jesse from McJuggernuggets, he put all of his life savings into crypto. This would all be revealed in a video he uploaded on January 18th, titled, I'm Finally Rich, How Crypto Made Me Rich. While well, Boogie doesn't state exactly how much he made, he stipulates that it wasn't even close to a million. But as Ethereum continued to rise, that attitude changed. Just over a week later, he would tweet out, So, remember I made that video saying I was rich, meaning I'm stable and well off? If crypto keeps doing this, I'll actually be a millionaire for the first time in my life. Wow. I did the calculations, and if I was able to cash out right around one million, Beep, I could boop, retire. Boop, boop. Never worry about money Whoa. again. Travel the world, get surgery to remove this skin, take care of my friends. Also, Bro, come on. You're not trying to travel the world. No, oh, hookers and cocaine, I guess. In true boogie fashion, he continued <laughs> dragging while feigning humility. In one tweet, he claimed to feel guilty for making so much money because he couldn't share it. But it's obvious he just wanted to flaunt his newfound wealth as he fixated on the mythical seven figures. He would tweet over and over again about how he hoped 
hope to become a millionaire. Thank God I invested and got lucky. Not a millionaire yet. Maybe one day. After my crypto passes 1 million, I'll get the Model X and make it a back to the future car. When my crypto investments finally make me a millionaire, I'm going to have hot nurses give me my Mountain Dew intravenously. This is Whoa. no coincidence. Even before investing, it's an aspiration he tweet about often. In October 2016, shortly before his ads were undercut, he wanted to earn a million within three years. Weeks later, that cool goal stuff. changed to one year. Of course, once he lost both his ads and sponsors, this became infeasible. That is, until crypto offered him one final chance, and by late February, Boogie tripled his life savings. This was well more than wow. enough for him to live comfortably. And given you ever you ever think that maybe instead of trying to focus on being a millionaire, maybe the focus should just be to be to be happy. And then that brings up the very important question. Have you ever loved? Hmm? Have you ever loved before? It's incredible stuff, guys. It's very beautiful stuff. Okay, it's very beautiful. Have you ever loved? And he admitted it was the game of a suicidal man? man. One would expect him to withdraw. But oddly, he seemed convinced it was safer in Ethereum. Holy he spoke fuck. of it as if it were a bank, I'm noting that his money was better I'm there and I'm out of their reach. Insane. Instead of pulling it out, he attempted to diversify by taking more and more risks on random shit coins with basically no backing. Though it's uncertain <laughs> how many he bought, some can be ascertained through Twitter. Not only was Boogie being greedy, he was also exhibiting signs of pride, as he began investing as if he actually had a good understanding of what made certain cryptos valuable and others not, instead of investing with the understanding that he had gotten lucky. For yeah, example, right, for Boogie all. bought a few hundred dollars worth of Luna. This would end up being a 99.9% .9 loss dropping to just two cents. Even when he did Jesus. make money, the gains were then funneled into losses. He put three grand into Dogecoin of all things, only to profit 2,000. However, the money was then put into GME during the GameStop short squeeze. Despite claiming multiple times he would walk away from crypto for security, he never did. Instead, he wasted away hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> in a desperate attempt to earn more. Bro, he tried to capitalize on the crypto squeeze? What the fuck? What is he? What a silly goose. Okay, did he? Yeah, he yeah. became much quieter about his investments, and it would take until 2022 for him to admit why. On February 23rd, he admitted to making so many bad trades, he was back to a break-even investment point. Within 12 months, he managed to lose half a million dollars. This itself would be bad Jesus. enough, but just a few months later, even that would be lost. That same June, the crypto market experienced a massive downturn. This resulted in it shedding nearly 60% of its total market cap, a loss of Have over $2 trillion. Dollars. This idea. universal decline caused Boogie to incur a loss of over six figures. How's the crypto crash hitting you? Not great. <laughs> I will take your subscriptions today. <laughs> uh, oh, I will definitely take your donations and subscriptions today. Crypto market crashes is, is not fun. I am sweating it. I'm sweating bullets, boys. You remember this time a year ago, I made a video saying I'll never have to work again and I'm fine and everything else. Should have pulled out of the market then. I <laughs> did not. <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to go back up at one point, but, uh, you know, for it is right now, scary times, boys. Ethereum alone. I don't know, man. Why do people support this guy? <laughs> Lots of be an asshole, but, like, my thing is, is that, like, I understand, like, yeah, you know, as a content creator, subs subscriptions and stuff are great, you know. Uh, I personally really never ask for subs. I let people know. Two dollars a month to access the Discord by getting a YouTube membership and, lot and, and linking it. I never really say that though. It's like I don't really care. I get enough on ad revenue on my videos, and I just don't want to be the guy asking for fucking subs. If you do, that's fine. But my thing is, is like this. This guy's like, yeah, I was fucking rich, and then I just didn't. I just decided not to keep my money, and so I lost it all. It's like, why would I feel bad for you? You know, I get like young or, or not young, but like smaller content creators where it's like that's their living. But this guy puts himself into a situation out of pure luck where he's like set for life. And then he just doesn't. He just doesn't. You know what I mean? He just doesn't do the right thing. It's so stupid. Own decreased to a third of its price, dropping from three thousand bucks to just one thousand in a few months. Oh, Boogie sure. remained hopeful, desperate to retain that. Hey, elite. listen, that's already a lot of deer, you know? Too many for me to eat in one sitting. Jin that he was still wealthy, but as what remained of his savings began to dry up, he was forced to accept the truth. Up until this point, no one knew how truly bad things had gotten. But then on October oh, 5th, no. Boogie uploaded a video simply titled, I need your help. The titled, the bad I reason farted. is I'm finally in a position where I have to get back to work. Oh no, that's what a fucking tragedy, dude. You gotta go to work? Ah, oh, fuck. This ain't work, bro. The, what, the shit that you do isn't work. The shit that I do doesn't really like real work. You're sitting on a fuck computer talking. I mean, I, I you're just sitting there making like some half ass Aben videos every day. You can't even make one a day. What the hell are you doing? Excuses here. You know, I spent a tremendous amount of money on dumb, dumb things. Yeah, please but the biggest issue subsidize is my failure. I had a nice big nest egg. 
I took some financial advice from a friend and I'm not pointing fingers necessarily. I took the advice, but I put my money in the crypto market in the wrong section and I pretty much lost most of it. Oh, fuck. After publicly Wait, gloating that U2 was no longer his job, Boogie begrudgingly returned. He briefly explains what happened, blaming advice he took from a friend. The rest is exactly what you would expect. He desperately begs his audience for money while promising new Francis videos. He calls upon them to buy his merchandise, use his referral links, and send super chats. Of course, this was rather unconvincing and the video was received extremely poorly, receiving an overwhelming 18,000 dislikes compared to 10,000 likes. The comments were filled with people mocking Actually, him. Actually, surprised that it got as many likes as it did, to be honest with you. <laughs> him to get a job. In response, he reminded them that he was disabled and a felon. For unrelated Justin reasons, he was a clip from March. Four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Oh no! Here's the money you asked Thank for. Thank you so much. Please give me all your money and your super chats, and uh, I gotta make merch for you guys. And you know, give me your money, man. I need it. Um, give me it right now. I need your memberships. Give me all your money. I made a bad crypto investment. And it's making me have to poop. Tregan Films super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Stop giving me money. <laughs> Been loving your content ever since I came across your channel last year. Thank you, thank you so Here's much. Here's to more epic streams. That's very big. Love from Washington State. Thank you, Heart. I love you too. I love you too. Thank you so much. Of this year before the crash. When people tell me to go get a real job, it makes me laugh because I'm not going to go work harder <sighs> to make less money. Damn, that might be your guy. choice. It definitely ain't going to be mine. Though Boogie doesn't name whose advice he took, he would provide more clues on Twitter. In March, Boogie tweeted about STORJ. Uh, he stated that experts consider the coin undervalued and worth looking into. The price plummeted, causing experts. many to criticize him for giving bad financial advice. In response, he claimed to have not lost much and that anyone who thought otherwise was a moron. Well, oh, after uploading the video, he wrote a thread goose. admitting that he did, in fact, lose a lot on it. 100% this. I took bad financial advice from a friend who promised he would bail me out if things went bad. Things went bad and he did not. Really stupid of me. Please it's tell us the shit coin. You're gonna laugh. <sighs> Storage. This alludes to the same Trans offer explicitly referenced to be from McJugger. Thank you guys. Cents. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Nugget. Now I can afford my sugar baby. Interestingly, Boogie claims to have severed the friendship in a reply. In a different thread, he <sighs> says that he hasn't spoken to Jesse in eight months. Damn. It seems like after realizing how much he'd lost, Boogie attempted to take him up on the deal. It wasn't honored, and the two had a falling out. The same day this video came out, Jesse was called out by an ex-friend for allegedly misgendering her on purpose. This led oh, to a massive no. back and forth as Boogie stepped to her. To oh no! He's got to go to jail. He's got to go to jail, guys. Fuck. Where am I supposed to go with this question? We got to send this guy to jail. You can't be fucking misgendering people on purpose. It's fucking crazy, dude. That's hate speech, bro. Go to jail. <laughs> send this guy to jail, Boogie. You got him. Defense. Take yeah, care of him. A statement for the Keemstar show where a three hour breakdown of the drama was conducted. Wow, that sounds incredible. I just wanted to film a little video here in support of Emily because I feel like it's really important that her message is heard here. Jesse responded by accusing him of ulterior motives, claiming he weaponized the issue for- I got fucking misgendered. Listen, you shouldn't misgender people, but shut the fuck up. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Especially if it's if it's not so- Like, if your friend- Don't be your friend anymore. Hey, you're an asshole. Okay, this guy's in a thing. This is what needs to happen if you misgender people, by the way. This is what needs to- You need to be put in the stockades. Bro, come on. <laughs> Oh, we have our, our epic. Don't worry, I'm going to donate all the money that you guys Tregan give me today. Films super chatted $99.99. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm going to make sure to just pay that forward to Boogie. Uh, that's where all your donations will be going today. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. I really do. Um, This is where this is where that guy belongs, that misgendered. He belongs in the set. Wow, I'm a, a little bit a little muscular. Oh, Jesus. Uh, he belongs in the stockades. Get rid of this guy. All right, guys, for real. Stop, stop, don't name me money. I really appreciate it, but Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Tregan Films, again, and everybody else. But, you know, obviously he's better than you guys because he gave me what? more money. And here's his channel. And he does films. So, you know, go check it out. I'm going to get back to the video. And, uh, yeah, let's keep going. For his personal problems. Thank you so much, though. And Boogie and everyone's trying to put their bitter resentment, their personal yeah, problems yeah, towards yeah. me. Two bro like super chatted five dollars for your troubles. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, he elaborated in a Twitter video the next day, though surprisingly revealed an entirely different reason. In Jesse's words, they fell out because one of Boogie's friends brought two prostitutes to his Halloween party without permission. Apparently, they drunkenly started. Yeah, you need permission to bring prostitutes to a party, to be honest with you. That's fucking wild, brother. That's a fucking wild thing to do. 
fingering each other to the point of staining his carpet with blood. Jesse's father yeah. kicked them out, only for the friend to drunkenly put him through a table. Boogie was allegedly Damn. filming all this, which led Jesse's dad to lecture him on. They got WWE at your house, bro. Shit, bro. I'm all over that shit. What? I'm all over the WWE. Being disrespectful. They got into an argument, resulting in Boogie and his friend being kicked out and forced All to right. stay at a hotel. I think Papa should use that when he's gotten to invest in quality camera for OnlyFans. Well, maybe I'll invest in a better camera for my stream. Um, but I don't know about OnlyFans. <laughs> Boogie refuted this by posting a video of these ladies of the night making out, but it's since been deleted. It did show he wasn't filming in the specific clip, but... I'm going to be real with you. Who cares about any of that? What's stupid? Like, why? Could you imagine being like 30 or 40 years old and like centralizing your life around that kind of petty drama? Like, grow up. I don't really know the specifics of what's going on, but just shut the fuck up. You know, it's just like, holy fucking titty balls. Yo, stop attacking me, bro. Or we're going to have to throw hands. Um, it just seems like so ridiculous. Like why, why you can disconnect yourself from this drama. You know, you saw somebody misgender somebody and decided to play fucking white knight. Like, okay. Like, oh, that's, that's not good. Don't do that thing. Um, that's it. And then instead you're going off making tweets about how people need to go to jail for it or something. Like, just being fucking like for what, who, who do you think you're saving? You know what I mean? Save your money. <laughs> Other than that, the circumstances remain unclear. Save your money. It seems strange that if Jesse was responsible for the advice, it wouldn't come up. Boogie is dead set on blaming that friend for his current situation, stating, I wasn't living beyond my means. I just rested it all on the advice of a friend and it didn't pan out. What can I say? I'm an idiot. Boogie would manage to collect nearly a thousand in donations. Not a lot, but more than you'd expect. He also so made hundreds by signing up. and selling Magic the Gathering cards. On YouTube, it appears he's Whoa. begun to embrace whatever tactics are necessary to get clicks. He released a follow up video thanking supporters while reading <laughs> nice and mean comments. The thumbnail, meanwhile, contains an edited photo of his face to make him appear wider this is an explicit <sighs> Bro, come that looks that looks the most like me that i've ever seen boogie damn that's f actually tragic for me that's unironically tragic damn this is the most this is the most like me i've ever seen boogie look you see this, <laughs> this is fucked up this is terrible. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Okay. Well, you know, congratulations to me. Uh, incredible stuff. It's incredible. Was an attempt to monetize hate clicks showing just how far he's fallen from being the most wholesome man on the internet. Damn. Besides the usual vlogging and the desperate attempts at more Francis videos, he returned to form, making videos about his weight and potentially losing it. He even recruited yet another fitness YouTuber to help him out with his umpteenth weight loss journey. I don't want to become cynical about this because, on some level, I think that most people hope he'll become healthy and live the rest of his life in peace. But considering that Boogie seems less interested in peace and more in attention and money, I fear that this guy is just wasting his time. On November 15th, 2022, Boogie uploaded a video still? titled, I Have a Rare Form of Cancer. Unfortunately, oh, it shit. seems like he's not lying at all, especially considering that's what his father passed away from. Though we usually look at online influencers and content creators as sources of entertainment and nothing else, it really does seem like Boogie is staring straight at the potential end of his life in a not-too-distant future. I, I don't think so. I, I From what I remember, it's like some kind of thing where like your blood has too much of a thing, but it's not super life-threatening. Because uh, I think... Because I don't remember the specifics. It's the same, the same thing to me at the endocrinologist or whatever the fuck it's called, the blood doctor. And they're like, yeah, you know, you just it's it's thank they're like, oh, you have too much of this or something, but it's fine. You're fine. Kind of. I was like, okay, I don't. I mean, I could be wrong about it because I wasn't really listening to the doctor too much after they said it's not really a big deal, but it's like technically classified as cancer or something. Uh, I don't remember the specifics, but you know, I'm not trying to be an asshole. But that even he, if, I think even he said that himself that it's not really life threatening. But I can be misremembering uh, because I have fat in my ears or something. So. And we get to see just what he does with his last days. By March 1st, he posted a video where he talks about going a month off of his antidepressants, meaning that he is quite literally not oh, taking shit. his meds. And not though good. I can't really say what the effects of doing this were, this kind of screwing around with the medicine you've been prescribed is seriously advised against. It's also worth noting that in this video... Hey, 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 maybe drinks. he was listening to, like, the high-value male sphere. You gotta take your shit off. Hey, hey, no more meds, dude. It makes you freaking weak, dude. Get off your freaking meds, you silly little duckling. You know, Mountain Dew. He's also posted several videos talking Mountain about his experiences Dew. with psychedelics since then, saying he's yeah, reached multiple revelations dude. about himself as a I'm person fucking, and who he is. The Whether these man. various epiphanies will mean anything to his future, I can't say. As much as he's gone through and as intelligent and conscious of his own actions as he may seem, it does look like he's stuck in a cycle of doing bad things, doubling down, pushing everybody away from him, then feeling sorry for himself, rinse and repeat. Despite all of the videos he makes acknowledging how unwell of a person he truly is, none of it is to any avail, as it's just a matter of time until he's back doing his usual stick. It doesn't feel at all like he's trying to change. More so, it seems like he's trying to 
cash into the credit his audience has extended to him and milk it for everything that it's worth. Even if you can still muster sympathy for him, there's always the fear in the background that as soon as he's given any leeway again, he'll go back to being his normal self. Hopefully I'm wrong. I've been Turkey Tom. Thanks for watching. And until next time, leave All right. Alone. All right. That's uh that is uh a little bit of an uh, homage to the critical drinker. You can tell Turkey Tom is a bit of a fan. Beautiful stuff.